Hello and welcome Wargamers to our Warhammer 40k battle report for you today. I am Luca from MiniWarGaming.com joined by a returning guest, Stefan, in this 2,000 point, you heard it, I'm actually doing 2,000 point matches again just to try it out, it's been a while, of Space Wolves against the Harlequins. So it's a kill or be killed style game. It will also be Tempest of War, thought I should let you know. work. Mini War Gaming's Warhammer 40k Battle Report. Let us take a look at the wolves today. We're trying to have some fun with our list. It is all firstborn. No primaris in sight. Uh, we are going to be running a Arcs of Omen detachment as we play Tempest War naturally. I went with elites as my main choice uh, just because I got a lot of them. So I needed, I needed to pick them to be my main choice. Leading it all, we got a Wolf Lord in Terminator armor. I am going to make him a Warrior of Legend for a command point, in addition to giving him a Relic and a Warlord trait. So he cost me three command points. I am going to give him, uh, or he's going to be unlocking the Saga of the Hunter and the Saga of the Wolf Ken, or continuing that Saga in general, which gives him a, uh, the ability to advance and charge and bonuses to both of those, as well as extra attacks consistently throughout this game. Leading with him, I don't actually have any librarians today, or room priests, sorry, apologies, or wolf priests, but I do have Bjorn the Fell Handed. I don't know why, but every time I make a firstborn list, he always pokes his ugly head up and, uh, well, em em embrace it and love it because uh, here he is yet again with uh, True Claw and, and, a, and an Assault Cannon because that's, that's what he's got. Uh, the rest of the list, we will move on to troops. I am running three of them. Uh, again, all firstborn. And everything's kind of free now and it's kind of fun to bring all these special weapons. So I got two units of Gray Slayers that have the exact same loadout. Uh, all chain swords because it's free. And uh, we have a plasma gun and a melt gun in both squads. I probably and most certainly will be combat squatting everything here. I will be running a 10-man squad of Blood Claws as well. Uh, one Blood Claw is going to have a Plasma Pistol because what you see is what you get there. And uh, one of them will have a melt gun And then the pack leader will have a Power Fist. I will point out, I do not have a Wolf Guard for this unit. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, now on to the Elites, uh, which is where pretty much the rest of my points are. I will be running a pair of Venerable Dreadnoughts with Stormbolters and uh, Blizzard Shield and Fenrisian Axes. That's, that's uh, also an important point, uh, thing to point out there. I will be running three squads of Wolfen. I did kind of want to run three squads of ten, but I realized that might have been a little too ridiculous. And it's uh, it made my list look a little weird. So I, I trimmed them down to five-man squads. And they have the, the variety of war gear you see here. So some have Storm Shields, some have the Axes. And uh, the champions do have the Frost Claws. Been a while since you've seen them, and that's the main reason. They were the driving force of this list, actually. I wanted to run them, and I said, well, screw, why don't I just run a bunch of old wolf stuff? Technically, the wolf and are, like, not that old, but you guys get the idea. I am running a five-man squad of Wolf Guard Terminators with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, acting as an honor guard for our Wolf Lord. And... That is it for elites, apparently. That is going to take up a bunch of our points, but we do have a couple of units of long fangs, because I might as well have some heavy fire support from those fine lads there, the veterans of the chapter. I am going to be running a squad of Laz Cannons with their dead baby. Uh, no Wolfguard Terminator in that squad, but I will be running a squad of multi melta long fangs with a Wolfguard Terminator included. And that is... Uh, are 2,000 points of wolves today. It's uh, it's like I'm running f three armies in one here. It's with how cheap everything is. Well, let's go take a look at the Happy Flying Dancing Clowns by Stefan. Hi, I'm Stefan, and I am playing the Harlequins today. My army is run by a troop master with the Player of Twilight and Favor of Kegarak Warlord trait. I gave him the Favor of the Laughing God to give him two. He's got the Shagarax Rose Relic with the uh, Harlequin's Quest there, just to make him a little more of the hitty. And uh, the Queen of Shards Pivotal Roll to make him a little more survivable so he can hit more. Uh, we have a Shadow Seer with the Mirrored Architect, as expensive as it is. I want to try it as its old way of having the bubble. Three squads of troops, two of them are in a Star Weaver, one of them's foot slogging it with the rest of the guys. Two Void Weavers, a Death Jester for some Snipies, a Solitaire for some Smashies, and three squads of Sky Weavers, all five man big. 
And with that, let's go take a look at our mission, for it will be Tempest of War. And we've already figured out our cards here. Our deployment style will be labeled Spearhead Assault. So it's identical to, well, it's not identical to Search and Destroy, but it takes up the kind of same surface area. So we have our deployment zones, which are going to be these happy little triangles, starting from the long battlefield edge, going towards the middle. However, we are not allowed to deploy within nine inches of the middle, therefore it is cut off. Our no man's land will be a bow tie, and we have five objectives. Uh, we are going to have one in each deployment zone, and then the remaining three all in no man's land, as per the rules for Tempest of War. And our mission will be a direct assault. This is your typical Eternal War-style mission, because you'll gain victory points for the following. Having one objective marker, two or more objective markers, and more than your opponent, starting in the second to fifth battle round. However, the other primary part of this mission will be to actively continuously taking objectives this one's very easy to max out on if you're actively playing the game so it's uh, all about taking objectives you don't control and then destroying enemy units that are on objectives at the start of the at the start of your turn so you'll get two victory points if you do either one of those if you're able to take an objective and kill an enemy off of an objective in the same turn that's actually worth three victory points and our fancy little mission rule that will be kind of messing with our game will be supply lines. So it is important to hold the objective in your deployment zone because if you do not, you will not receive your Battleforge CP bonus at the start of every player's command phase. So that will be kind of an issue if that's not going to happen. Taking a look at our little winter wonderland for our battle today. I just haven't played on a like a white mat in a while, I suppose. So apologies if it's a little bright for you guys there, but eh, maybe some of you will appreciate it. Uh, we're going a little bit lighter on terrain today because uh, I just feel like it. If, if we're all gonna get shot up, uh, we might as well get shot up together. And uh, we do have a lot of dents though. So this terrain here, this battle mat is from gamemat.eu. Uh, this is one of their double-sided mats. As you can see, they got like a, a much more uh, springtime kind of battle mat on the other side there. Uh, and the, these rocks, these snowy rocks are uh, just a new, shipment a uh, new set from gamemat.eu as well now that i think about it both are from gamemat.eu and then uh, a lot of the trees are from adam at greenleaf training just did a winter set for us a little while ago and then games workshop for the um the buildings and the big science things all over the place uh we are gonna go ahead and uh, roll off to pick our sides we don't know who's deploying where yet actually i kind of i guess i'm okay with either side narratively i'm either like showing up to stop the harlequin infiltration of this facility or i'll be defending the infiltration uh against the infiltration uh either way i'm okay with it and uh we're gonna try and make it work uh, as for rules for terrain the walls are gonna count as walls so I, I always like to play them less than an inch mechanically in height so you don't get like double punish for climbing over them and being difficult terrain and then the game at dot eu rocks will just be obstacles so you get cover on them behind them you do technically and everyone's like we don't get you do get cover if you're on an obstacle so you're technically drawing the line over it for anyone who's curious but you get cover on or behind them and then the clusters of trees are gonna count as woods uh, they're gonna be breachable and all that stuff we're just gonna like take them away and move them around to show you where the footprint looks like when necessary but they're kind of dense infantry can move right through them uh, otherwise we're pretty good to go here i do want to remind our silver vault members we have access to a lot of discount codes to uh, battle mat companies terrain companies hobby supplies it's well over 50 at this point in the uh, vault section of the website so go to miniwargaming.com and then go to the drop down and go to the vault section and that'll be where you need to go uh, otherwise there is a link in the description that'll redirect you if you don't want to go to the website that'll just take you there also and uh you can go check out what's available you don't actually need to be a silver vault member to see what's available you can be bronze and then still check it out but you don't get the code unless you're a silver vault member so say you're gonna buy like a big collection from uh, game mat like battle mats uh like five battle mats and like uh two tables of terrain well maybe consider upgrading from bronze to silver and you'll save yourself uh way more money than you might imagine by doing so also if you want to come by and challenge us like our man uh, stefan here has go to meaningmoregame.com slash challenge you'll talk to josh and he'll come and play games with us now if you want to play 40k that might be a, a bit out but aos we can get you here tomorrow and i'll also play every other game i'll do like lord of the rings i'll do uh that's the only one that comes to mind now. Titanicus, uh, Blood Bowl, you kind of name it, I'll do it. I'll do for old 40K too. I've, I've, I've got a hankering to do some second edition. So if you are a viewer and you want to come by and play some second edition Warhammer 40K, hit me up. I'd love to do some old hammer as well, or at least recently. I haven't hadn't had that pop up in a bit. So uh, please, let's make that a thing. I'm sure a lot of you would appreciate it to see what the game has come from. And, you know, you get to see the direction the game is going as well. Anyways, we're going to roll off and deploy our forces. I actually don't have, I do have a die ready. I am so ready for this. Look, I got a die right there. Ha ha. 
I got a six. Ooh, I get to pick and deploy. Crap, I actually don't know. Uh, hmm. If I choose that side, I'll get cover for certain things. There's, there's walls. There's rocks over here, too. For once in my career here, I'm actually not going to be lazy. I'm going to choose that side because I like the idea of defending the facility from the Harlequin infiltration. Also, I do like... I like the position of the dense woods here and there, so like that side has it. I do like the walls over here though to help against some of the shooting if it comes up. Uh, and then that one's easy and easy-ish to defend as well. So that's what I'm gonna go over there. And then the Harlequins are gonna deploy over here. And then for you guys watching, I'll be back in a second. And here we are all deployed. So I chose the other side and uh, have some regrets because uh, the way the, the deployment was, that thing wasn't feasible to deploy at all. So it was a completely abandoned facility. All my forces over there. Uh, but for some of the Harlequin deployments, we got ourselves a transport. That's the Void, that's the Star Weaver. The Void Weaver is a gunship. We got a Troop Haze with the Shadow Seer, Death Jester, the Troop Master. Uh, our solitaire is Pivotal Roll. You said he's a uh, deep strike? No, sorry, it was Ron. He's chilling. Oh, actually, you read solitaire. What's his Pivotal Roll? Uh, the Prince of Sins. I, that is it. He is the Prince of Sins. And we got some jet bikes. Uh, Sky Weavers, I believe they're called. So Sky Weavers, Sky Weavers. Uh, more Sky Weavers. These are the ones with the um, haywire, and those are the ones with they have bolas, it looks like. So. Yeah, bolas and the... Um uh, Shurik and Cannons, sure, and then the other ones are Zephyr Glaives and Haywire Cannons. Super nasty melee guys, uh, sh uh, shooty guys, but all, all around they're all kind of shooty in general. Uh, this is the Void Weaver, Void Weaver, uh, that is a Sky Weaver, nope, uh, Star, Weaver. Star Weaver, yep. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if I can get all the names right. That's all of them to believe. Do you have anything in, 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 as reinforcements? No, just nope. the two squads and transports. Just the guys in transports, which are the true pays. Over on my side, I got my long fangs deployed back here behind cover in case I don't have to go first. They can move up there and they're long fangs. They don't care about negative one to hit. Uh, if, they, if, they don't, if they don't want to care about it, they don't have to care about it. Put my blood claws over here, Bjorn and two Vendreds uh, in the, so the two Vendreds and these gray hunters are in the woods because they sense gray in the woods and they're looking for it. We got our assault terminators just like straight up in the middle of the board, gonna walk up the middle, hope for the best with the Wolf Lord and Terminator armor and more gray hunters on this side. When I mentioned combat squads earlier, totally blanked. And I remember that Space Wolves cannot combat squad. That is a uh, typical Astartes thing. That's a Codex Astartes uh, nonsense. And you don't hey, follow that. We know how we feel about the Codex of Stardew, so, so that Just is... burn that book. <laughs> forget, forget that nonsense. No combat squatting allowed, even though that would be amazing if I could combat squad right now. But this is how we are set up. I got three units of Wolfen in reserve, as well as one more unit of Long Fang Multimeltas uh, ready to show up. So, uh, Stefan and I are going to roll off and uh, see who gets to go first here. I believe I would love to go first because of the reserve aspect of things. I got five. It's a strong start. Uh, beats Woo! the crap out of the one on the Harlequin side. Do I have a whole lot of firepower to go against uh, the Harlequins off the rip? Uh, because uh, I need to move around and I can't use Bolter Discipline because of no combat squad. I would have loved to have a couple squads back here, Bolter Discipline, and then the other ones move forward. But again, no combat squad. Co that's Codex Astartes nonsense. We're not here for Codex Astartes nonsense. So turn one, Wolves. Uh, let's see how this goes. It's a kill or be killed kind of game. So good luck to you and your Harlequins. Gonna need it with that... Uh... Five up invol from a four up invol. This is my first game with the most recent nerf. So every time <laughs> we play, uh, it's always one. They're always one step weaker. And every army that I that I so it was the it's Necron one step buff. <laughs> the, the Necrons got stronger. Harlequins got weaker, and now the Harlequins got weaker again. Space Wolves, uh, without contempt, but cheaper all around, so hard to say. But I'm also playing all firstborn, so really try to utilize that like free upgrades everywhere is the uh, other part of the list here. But anyways, I ramble on enough. Let's play Warhammer. So we're going to use this Bandua War Games uh, score tracker for the score. I'll be on the left because I'm actually on the left of the side. And my enemy, Stefan, will be the Harlequins with the white die. And uh, currently four to five command points. Started with three and four, though. Just wanted to show off my cards at the start of my turns so you could all laugh with me as uh, to how difficult these might be. For those painting, I got Tempting Target. Grind them down and deploy Teleport Homer. Tempting Target says... That Stefan has to pick one of these three objectives for me to go for, and I'm going to assume he's going to pick this one way over there, out of reach of my army, which is uh, fair. So, won't be able to get that one, but I can start working towards it at least. And then the other ones are deploy teleport homers, which won't happen either, because I have to get in your deployment zone and deploy a teleport homer. Can't do that. And then the last one is uh, just kill things, but that's going to be hard to do on the first turn, because you're not really committed to any fighting anywhere, uh, generally. So. You can't come play on turn one? <laughs> no, I can't really play. I could, I could shoot a little bit on turn one, and that's about it. But luckily, I get to go first, so you'll see my reinforcements right away, and uh, hopefully they, um, they got some punch to them. But uh, otherwise... 
I'm not going to spend a command point uh, on any of that. I, that. That's what you want for tempting Terry, right? You don't, you don't want to like force my hand in these directions. You want to go over there because I could get these ones. Not it'd be giving me the victory point for them. But how? Uh, well, this one would be hard to get too. I don't know. It's up to you. I just go for that one to make it difficult. Yeah, kind of stretch my forces that direction to go for it. Makes sense. Uh, command phase. I believe uh, it is at the start of the battle round. I gotta roll my oh, luck of the laughing god. Oh, luck of the laughing god. So you're gonna opt to roll four dice for luck of the laughing god, which is uh, keen or important because your warlord trait. Yeah, the warlord trait gives me um, if I roll four dice minimum, I get a command point no matter what the results are. So gotcha. Yeah. So at least it's a buff. And then if you roll one, two, three, four. Oh, so you got two, two tiers. Doubles, so, so nothing. But nothing there. I and get a command point. <laughs> that does put you to six. That's the, I assume that counts towards zero one for the battle round. Uh, maybe, maybe. But you got six all the same. And then if anyone is unfamiliar with Luck of the Laughing God, has been eroded. I think probably a couple. Well, maybe only one time. But, uh, Just once, yeah. Can you, can you declare up to six dice? You can. Yeah. You can okay. only roll up to six dice, <laughs> but they all have to be unique to get them. Yeah. So like the, the meta people will do like two or three. Right. Because your odds of getting not doubles in that are usually good right but i want the command point so i went for four and if almost you almost had it and if you stick the four you get four rerolls and the command point for the yeah. battle round that's pretty dope <laughs> i like it i appreciate it i do as for my command phase the only thing i could do is wisdom of the ancients on bjorn and that would only really help out the the last cannon team but i don't think i'm going to do that right now i, I was uh, joking off camera earlier with stefan about like keeping bjorn in the back for long fangs like, that's i'm like that's what cowards do and i totally was part of the plan <laughs> while i was building the list it was gonna be that's what everyone does it's the, yeah like you you keep bjorn back there shoots his assault cannon and then he protects them i was gonna do it for the first couple turns as he moves up the board and they're gonna move kind of with him because they're long fangs they can move and shoot if they uh use the command point on keen senses but we're gonna go right on to the movement phase i'm gonna keep my command point and i'm gonna hopefully not roll 14 ones and uh, we'll just hope for the best. And uh, we'll see where we end up. Uh, the first turn's gonna be kind of boring on movement, so I am gonna generally show you where everything is gonna end up. We're gonna move forward. Gonna move that direction. Uh, this is all gonna move forward. And I'm gonna run the blood claws. That's the only thing I'm gonna run, so I'll show them off. They're gonna run an extra six. Hey, that's a pretty good roll. That's a pretty, pretty good roll. I'm probably, because I rolled well enough, yeah, I'll probably just have them cross this area here for the difficult terrain and then slow everyone else down, but that's a pretty good roll. Uh, they're gonna move over there, not in range of the objective yet. Uh, these guys had a couple more inches of movement, but they couldn't climb up and clear it. So three up, so they need a little bit more than three to get up there. Uh, then these long fangs are gonna move. In fact, the rest of this is gonna move. I'm gonna show you where it ends up. So when I said only they were gonna advance, I lied. I advanced the two dreadnoughts as well and the terminators because they don't have any shooting guns. I mean, they have storm bolters, but they're uh, too far away to use them. So we advanced our Terminators four inches to the objective, and our Wolf Lord just tucked in behind them. They moved six. They moved forward a little bit, but not going to be able to do much this turn because of uh, the Shadow Seer mostly and the range of any anything that shoots at anything within six of the Shadow Seer is uh, they count as an extra six inches away. So not going to be too effective on them the first turn. And that's about it. We're on to the shooting phase. We are going to fire our four last cannons into the Sky Weavers. That's the jet bike squad. I want to fire the ones with the bola with the Harlequin print on them. So I'll shoot at them and I'll use keen senses to ignore any to hit modifiers and BS modifiers. Uh, but I don't get rerolls against them because they have a Mirage projectors, something like mirage that. Launchers. launchers. So threes to hit, no rerolls. And these are, what top are you? Four? Yep. Twos to wound? Ah, look at that, two ones. Well, I was thinking about doing Wisdom of the Ancient. It's no rerolls to hit. I could have rerolled to wound against, against them, but I'll just take the one. That uh, five up pinball save does me. No. Uh, <laughs> D, D6 damage. It will punk one of the bikes. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my dead baby here, and I forgot to declare my signum, so I'm using my dead baby on the signum guy, which will mean he's going to load up that last cannon one more time and fire it on a two. All right, there we go. <laughs> that is it for them shooting. I'm gonna move on to this squad firing and uh, see what they can get done. The squad here is gonna fire. I'm gonna put everything into them that can see them, which is not all of them. These two here are gonna fire into the troop A uh, instead, if I'm in range. Not in range because of the shadows here. So it will be seven of them firing. However, uh, one of them has a bolt pistol, so that's not gonna happen. One's got a melted gun, that's not gonna happen. So it's actually gonna be five of them firing and then one's, uh, one's a plasma gun. It's gonna be rough, five bolt guns. Uh, which is, you said negative one to hit? No. On the, oh no, no rerolls. Uh, all right, so those all hit, and these are probably four students, so two saves on the bikes. Throw the plasma gun in there as well, just in case it misses. Two saves at no AP. I, you probably, that's a two and a four, so that's one damage probably. 
They don't have a four up armor? You do have a four up armor, so there'll only be one damage, and that is unfortunately gonna be my turn. Uh, because I didn't really have too much else lined up, and uh, I'm just gonna hopefully not get hit too hard back. And if I do, well, that's 40k. <laughs> <laughs> so, looking at my objectives, I got none of them finished. I'm gonna get rid of all of them. Uh, tempt actually, no, tempting target, I'm gonna keep because I do have things in reserve that can snag that if I need it. And taking a look at uh, Stefan's much better cards than mine. Assassinate is to kill one of my characters. Grind them down is to try and do what I did, but better. And no prisoners is to kill 30 wounds worth of uh, my models, which all three of these work in conjunction. Might not be doable right away, but they do have synergy. Our new command points, seven for the Harlequins to my four. So for the Harlequin turn, no, nothing to do in the command phase. This one transport, where did it move from? I just uh, kind of- It was back here. It was, that was, so it just jumped up there. Didn't this, did, it did not this gorgeous content. So we're gonna move the rest of this as well. Here comes Void Weaver number two. No, these are- These, these are, are Void Weavers. That is a Void Weaver. The other one's a- This is, that's a Star Weaver. That's a Star Weaver, because that's the gunship. That's right, so Void Weaver forward. Star Weaver forward. Void Weaver forward. Like it, they got a lot to prove here. Showing up, jumping up. Hello, transport. I'm gonna change that void weaver to go over there to make room for these uh, sky weavers to jump in. And that is the bikes. These are the ones with the haywire underneath and they have the glaives on top so they're good in melee. But not against dreadnoughts, but they're shooting as good against dreadnoughts. I should say, potentially good against dreadnoughts. Depending on how well, roll, how well Stephen here rolls them. Sky weavers ending up there and then the squad of sky weavers with the bola and the shuriken are gonna not move so aggressively, but still gonna move forward. Oh, hey, solitaire. Nice. Uh, we are debating on the blitz call. W were we doing a blitz call? No, no, no. no. I, I, I want to save it for if I need to move. I see, okay. A ridiculous amount. So Solitaire will simply move forward. Stefan is aware of my hero convention with the Gray Slayers over here. Uh, sorry, these are Gray Hunters. been playing a lot of Heresy. Uh, he's just going to kill them all first, which is, uh, I don't want that to happen, but it's probably going to happen. That will be movement. We have a psychic phase with the Shadow Seer back there. We do. Uh, we're going to cast Webway Dance and then probably Smite. All right. Well, I don't have a range on it for Smite. It's an 18 inch. Uh, smite, smite will probably hit these guys here. Uh, let's do, check out Webway Dance first, okay, though. So, seven. Seven to cast. You roll a nine. All right, what is Webway Dance? So, she now has a six inch bubble of basically a six up feeling of pain. Okay. That works. Shrugging off damage. Throw a Smite out, and you are going to get a seven. So, D3 Mortal Wounds to the Grey Hunters. And that's going to kill one of them. Let's lose. Uh, I suppose we'll lose the guy back there. Before all the bullets come in, the brain bullets hit. <laughs> and then now we have to figure out where the real bullet, where the, the, the other sci-fi elf bullets go. Oh, Void Weaver 1, we'll fire everything into this dreadnought first. And then we'll see, are they a unit or are they? No, they're separate. Separate, okay, so we'll do the first one here. See if, see if he's lucky and pops him off the rip. We're hitting on trees. Oh, I got a miss and a hit. Strength 12 on toughness. Seven, I believe it's a Vendred, but uh, it might be eight as well. So it'd probably a three wound. Don't roll the two now, don't look it up. That's a wound, there we go. High AP, I assume. Uh, negative four. Negative four, well, if that guy's gonna try and put his shield up in the air, uh, he will succeed and ignore the damage. Oh. That's what you get when you bring shields to a sci-fi fight. Is that the shuriken cannon as well. Shuriken cannons? Threes to hit, one miss. And probably fives to wound. That is gonna be a five to wound right there. And is that gonna do damage? Yes, I am venerable, which means I don't shrug it. Reduce the damage down to one, does not shrug it. Seven wounds left on that, then dread. So that's one Void Weaver finished. All right, so this unit of, the five unit here is going to shoot their Haywire cannons at him. Shields up. D3 plus one shots each for the Haywire. So it's five D3. Uh, so it's that two, four, six, eight, horrible. 11 shots. And threes to hit. Uh, followed up by uh, okay-ish roll, but overall low on the amount of shots. Moving on fours because it's haywire, but sixes are good. Yes. So I, I don't want to see sixes. I don't care about fours and fives. How about well, nothing and once? I'll take that as well. <laughs> so it's D3 more wounds in addition to its damage. Yes. So let me see if I save it. I do not put my shield up. One, roll the one D3 for the damage first, because I reduced it by one, so it's one damage, and then D3 mortal wounds. So a total of four damage, which I, that, that squad of five guys do four damage. I shrug one of it, so I take three. All right, so we're down to four wounds remaining, and then that's one out of the five Haywire squads done. Well, one out of the two Haywire squads done. So Void Weaver number two is gonna fire into him. And the big gun, does it hit threes? It misses twice. This is, uh... <laughs> The only chance I have in this game is for the Harlequins to not hit me with their guns. <laughs> not hitting you with my guns. And so we are avoid we are just playing the pure luck game here, guys. 
hand point to re-roll one of those dice to try and hit with something. Try and hit instead. That is going to be a miss. No. As, no, you're a destiny. You have to come fight me with your Void Weavers. <laughs> right, so right. we've survived two Void Weavers and one of the Sky Weaver units. Good one Lord. more Sky Weaver unit to go. And we get, well, I mean, and we still have a lot of other things that are safe too, but so far we've mitigated a lot of damage through so, our own luck. The other unit is going to shoot at him as well. This guy, oh geez, okay, well he's dead. But let's see, let's see if I get lucky again. D3 per plus one shots per gun, so that's ah. four. That's, that's a lot better, so uh, it's two, six, ten, plus three more is 13, plus three more. Yep, 16 shots. And threes! I wonder, probably should just pop smoke here. I think that's smoke launchers. Not too late now, but it's all good. Uh, and fours to wound because I'm a vehicle. Uh, the six. Oh, wow. you know what? Okay. I'm just gonna remove him. Do I? Do I explode? No. Well, I will. I'm okay with that too because it took quite a bit of firepower to take him out. But boy, that was like eight sixes. That was nuts. By the way, if anyone was curious, that was eight D three mortal wounds plus the damage they do on top of it. I figured I'd save ourselves uh, some die rolling. Two transports to fire and the other sky weaver unit with the bolas. Yes, and the death jester. Oh, and the death jester. That's right. Shuriken Ken's into the dreadnought here from the sky, not sky weaver. Sorry. That's the. Star Weaver, that's right, the transport. So we got two shirt and can, it's got, it's got one underneath or just the one? It's got one on top, one underneath. Gotcha, so two of them fired, so we got three hits, half of them hit. These are fives to wound a Dreadnought, because these are only strength six. Uh, that's one wound, but it's Bladestorm. Yeah. I shield it. And we have one more to fire. Shooting. So all the, the troop inside are gonna fire all their weapons into this squad of Grey Hunters. Two of them are fusion pistols. And then the two shirt and cannons will go into the Terminators here. Get the cannons out of the way. Uh, so. Not bad. Breeze to wound. Uh, with blades, or two of them. Uh, one of them's got good AT though. Yeah. So I'll do the regular save. Uh, we we make it, and then the blade storm, we fail it. It's two damage, I believe. So I got one wound left. It means I'm gonna have one wound left on this guy. Where's my champion? That is my champion. So let's put a wound on this guy. The contents inside. Go ahead and roll around here. Okay. They got the two fusion yeah. pistols. So we'll do those two first. So on threes. Okay, one hit and a two wound because it's uh, melt the pistol. That's a wound and uh, no save. Uh, it's D. It's got a minimum damage of I assume three ish. Yeah. Minimum three damage. I will lose this gray hunter there. Okay, uh, that's that transport done. Now we just have the bolas and the death chester to it's resolve. Six man, so the blast will affect that. That's a five man squad. One's a character. Oh, okay. This is a six man squad. Uh, so we got the shurikens underneath the sky weavers and the terminators, and then all the bolas are gonna f just gonna they're explosive little blasts, so they're pretty effective at killing gray hunters here. Do shuriken cannons first into the terminators, threes to hit. All right, these wound on threes, and then sixes are good. Okay, we have uh, four saves. Negative one normally. Uh, the sixes boost the AP up. I have one up saves because they have storm shields. These are all two ups. Oh wow, well it didn't matter. This is a good roll. Then we get to figure out the fun of the bolas. Are they just D three shots normally? Blast. D three. So it's gonna be four dice to find out how many shots they have. It'd be twelve shots because they're max shots each. Right. Okay. Three is to hit. Little hunters go. Okay, but average misses, not bad. Three is to wound. Strength seven. Explosions. Uh, a few misses there. That is negative three on the bola, so it's really good at taking out marine infantry. So even if I had contempt, I would have only made one of them. So that's gonna explode five of their bodies up. Let's lose five of their bodies. One, uh, two, if. Uh, Three, four, and a five. Now there's the three guys that were still in here for the. They just had oh, we forgot pistols. their pistols. Yeah, shirky pistols. Yeah, threes to hit. Uh, all hit, nice. And fours to wound with blade storm. Not called blade storm anymore, I think. But ooh, Dude, one. one of them. Good one normally, so fours and a six up. So that does kill one of them. Oof. Not ideal there, guys. This is why I tried to kill them because I knew that squad can kill a squad of my my ten man squads in one go. So uh, that's a pretty big hit on them. So now we just got him left. One sniper. He is gonna shoot for my wolf lord here. We got a pivotal roll. Every six to hit will count as three hits. It's like Tesla, in a, in a way. So let's see what we get here. Probably two's to hit. One miss and two hits. It's the strength. Three is to wound. That is two wounds. Six is probably matter. AP two on the gun anyway, so I'd go right to the six. Would be shuriken. So I'd be AP minus four or something like that, but it just involves all the same. Ooh, fail both. He's not gonna die, but he'll take some damage there, huh? Two damage each, so four. I don't really have a way to heal him. But I think he's pretty much dead the next time he takes damage. Ah, do I command point one of these? I'm trying to think of what I need my command points for. But screw it, I'll reroll one of these. Ah, uh, and uh, no, that's a fail. So I'm down to three command points and I got two wounds left on him. Uh, or maybe one, even. 
I have two remaining wounds. Okay. Well, he lived. That's okay. Uh, and that's it for shooting. We're on the charging. Charges. We got more pain coming our way. Where do you want to start? Um, Let me clear these guys out of there. I'm just keeping them here for the morale check, which is yeah. uh, pretty heavy. Um, you know what? I'm just going to get those out of here. The Solitaire is going to declare a charge into my Grey Hunters. I will not overwatch. I'll roll it up. And he is going to charge a total of... Da, 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 he gets da, an additional six with his thing. So. He'll go seven plus six. So he'll go very far. Hello, buddy. So he's around here. And then the Sky Weavers declare a charge. They're going to go one plus four for five. And they have to be within six to make it. I'm using a command point rule, forward to victory. And I see a two. Four and a two. Are they within seven, eh? Hmm. Do make it with the reroll on the seven, just. We're talking like quarter of an inch here. Uh, so they're just going to be there. And uh, that's it for charges. Uh, we want to try a charge into uh, my, my dreads over here. Uh, we'll say that I know they have a lot of good attacks, but the two damage, they all get reduced to one. And then he could hear a clean ravine as well. Suppose that's true. So it's it's one of those things where if we stick in combat, I'm not going to get shot to pieces. That's true. And I I, I think it's the safer bet. All right, charge it up. They yeah. could they have a lot of attacks. They could actually right. probably bully their way through it. That is ooh eight is almost certainly in seven, but they're probably almost certainly with an eight. Same bet. That's uh, where they end up with the charge. They but they are seven. They were seven and three quarters away. They make it. No need for the reroll on them. Uh, that will probably be it for charges, I assume? Yes, yes, that's okay. it, that's it for charges. So piling them in, getting them the two guys within half an inch, which will unlock the other ones attacking as well on the charge. They are about, uh, oh. four attacks each. Oh, because we're playing Twilight, they'll actually have five attacks each. These are threes to hit. Threes to hit. Oof, this could be bad. Could be very bad. Eh, could be good, though. It'll be threes to wound my Terminators. And, boop. Could be the end of the Terminators here. These are 11 saves. Uh, fours. I just need to roll well. That's pretty much it. So I kills one, two, three of them. Oh, they're not all dead. Nice. One does take two damage, though. Uh, do I want to re-roll to... No, I don't care about that. Yeah, so I'll take... So again, just double-checking. That guy had one wound left is dead. Then another one dead, then another one dead. Because there's only two damage each, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, exactly. So one, two, a three dead. And then that's the champion, the battle leader, the wolf guard veteran. And then the veteran veteran, and then that guy's got a wound left. Excellent. And I couldn't hear a clean bean with him earlier because you were outside of six when you charged in, and then you just piled in within six. If anyone's curious, I did not forget. Now, I could counter offensive. I will, I'm considering it, but I might want to save the command points too, which I think is nuts. I think I'll probably almost certainly for sure counter offensive here. <laughs> I just have a few questions. Uh, what are we looking at defensively on them? Is it only against shooting attacks the no, Mirage works? So these guys have the, uh, uh, the grotesque mask. I'm trying to remember what exactly it's called here. Harlequin's Mask. Each time a melee attack is made against the unit, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. Okay, well that's fair. That's fair. Uh, they, don't, they don't have anything that says you can't re-roll, because that's just the Mirage Launchers. Oh, okay. But you're minus one to hit. I will counter-offensive and hope for the best. Yeah. Minus one to hit will be relevant, so I'm going to counter-offensive, and I am going to... Oh, I will... Uh... Well, you charged in. This guy was going to hero clean intervene, too. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to... Roll my D6 to see if I get a command point for you spending a command Correct. point to yep. heroically intervene. Ba, 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 ba. Six. Ooh, I go up to seven. Fortunately, it's the same warlord trait that does both if you gamble four for the luck of the laughing god and or if I roll a six. It's two different bullet points, but you can still only gain one per battle round, so that six won't help there. So you still stay at six. Uh, and then this guy's going to heroically intervene. Uh, to get, uh, this is, and by this guy I mean Bjorn. Now, it does put a character in a risky situation to get attacked, but... Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm fully expecting you to shred them before you. Yeah, is so, it all, like only the one guy gets to intervene or gets to go right now? Right? Only one of the two get to go right now, and I think Bjorn's actually probably better to go with his heroic intervention. Yeah. I will counter offensive with Bjorn, so I have one command point left, and he is going to have six attacks for the heroic intervention and shock assault. I negative one to hit because you're masks, but I'm a space wolf, so I get plus one to hit when I heroic intervene. So twos, and then these wound on twos, but I get to re-roll the wound roll because it's true claw. And then you get your involve, five of them. Used to be four ups. Now they're to five ups. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what the people want. People want five up involves on Harley Quinn. People just want dead clowns. So it didn't matter in this case. I no fours. Two. So three are going to go through. We're going to, because you do have six command points, you're going to try and reroll one of those saves. What do we got? Three. A three. Let me get over here for that one. Sorry. Ooh, boop, boop. Uh, this is this is where I didn't want to interrupt with Bjorn because True Claw is a stupid weapon and only has D6 damage. So it kills one. 
Kills, no. I'm not gonna re-roll it, and then, so he only kills two of them, which is kind of what I hope to do, I guess, but, uh, could have done a little bit better with Bjorn. The other guy's, the other guy's a minimum four damage, but he hits on threes, and there's no re-rolling on the wound roll, so I thought Bjorn's a better choice there. But that's it, that's my counter offensive, so you can go, you can go with them now, and Bjorn's an el eligible target for assassinate, and then the solitaire can also go. Yes. All right, we're gonna resolve the solitaire here. He's just gonna attack my gray hunters. It attacks. On twos, because he's a solitaire. Yes. And these are probably threes to boot, because uh, he's got two different melee weapons. Yeah, he, well, he's he just got, it's called, just called solitaire weapons. Oh, okay. But he gets the kiss and caress keyword for yeah. the stratagem access. He used to have both of them before, so he just kept the keywords. So they all hit, and we still need three to wound, because strength six. Uh, we've got a few fails, but still five wounds. I'm at AP two, so these are five ups. You roll rather well. I make two of them, but they're two damage each, I assume. Yes. All right, so I kills all three of them, okay. or all two of them, I should say. Boom. And that is. Say, he did get one more attack because I forgot it. Oh, the charge, yeah. No. Yeah, he'll go into the woods there with the consolidate. Uh, then you get to fight with these guys over here now. Yes. All knock over the tree. All attacks are going to go into Bjorn here. Uh, just uh, hopefully you don't kill him. <laughs> I don't have an inbound save. That's a little scary. All right. Threes to hit him. Five to wound, because, uh, well, five to wound another one of them. I see a couple of wounds. Two. Probably not going to get much of a save against that. Ooh, double sixes might do it. Didn't really matter what the AP was, because those wouldn't feel no pains all the same. So he lives! Excellent. The extra attacks are charging. So I will go with my uh, non charged legs. I got them and uh, this Vendred. I'll just get him out of the way, because he's right here. I'll use the uh, movement there to get to that point. I'm not going to base, though, because I want to uh, consolidate a little bit further forward as well. Five attacks with a Venerable Dreadnought hitting on, uh, so they hit on twos normally, plus one to hit for the axe hitting on ones, and then negative two to hit because it's an axe and uh, you are got fancy masks, so threes. They all hit. These are twos to wound, no rerolls, and then five invulns. Every fail is four damage though, so it'll kill a guy, so this is uh, <laughs> rough. Oof. All right, so five ups. That is gonna be th only two dead. Only two dead. Three saves. Uh, so it's uh, four damage per. So which one is the champ? Is there even a champion in there? No. Okay, so leave him alive. And then I will use that to go up that way and then base contact. It was kind of a rock and a hard place there. Because you either keep him in combat or Bjorn in combat. One of the two. Uh, and then my Thunderhammer Storm Shield Terminators are going to go whoop. And he'll pile in there and attack. And they'll put all their attacks into the bikes. They are three damage each. Uh, Do they have the same upgrade of negative one to hit? In yes. melee? Yeah, okay. So my Thunderhammer hit on twos. Back to threes. They are going to be threes to hit. Uh oh, well, the ones didn't matter, I suppose. I T4, I assume. Yep. So two to wound, four invulns. And invulnerable saves. Okay, well, to be fair, you haven't rolled a single four yet. That's four <laughs> dead, though. Four of them get clapped by Thunder Hammers. There's one left. Oh, this is a volatile game, dude. Okay. Uh, that brings us to morale. It's your turn. You got to do yours first. They lost four dudes each. Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah, four dudes each. So I don't know what their morale is. We'll start with that one. Roll a d6, and we'll, that's a seven. They're probably okay on a seven, right? Right, that means they're eight as well. So they need to roll a, that's a six. That one is running away. Boink. I lost three Terminators over here. Uh, I'm gonna roll an eight, which means they're okay because they're nine with their Sergeant, or eight either way. And uh, you killed that squad completely. So that is, uh, that is pretty much it for the turn. Now we gotta look at secondaries. Because you almost assuredly got a couple of them there. Because you killed 20 wounds worth of uh, Grey Hunters for no prisoners. And then you killed three Terminators, which is uh, nine more. So that's 29. And then you killed the Ventra. That's over 30. Boom. Done there. And then you no killed... <laughs> so that's no prisoners complete. Uh, you didn't kill a character. You almost did, though. Two was off of him. So that one's not going to be done. But grind he's... Grind them down. Grind them down. You that's killed... at the end of your At next the end of my next turn. So I don't get my grind them down. Because I killed one of your units this battle round. Uh, and then you killed one of mine. So I don't get my grinding them down, but you killed two of mine in total, which means I killed one of yours. I have to kill one more of your units on my turn to deny your grinding them down. But you are up on the secondary game. Okay, and then ending your turn, you are on, just to keep everyone updated on the objectives you're on, currently that one and this one over here. I don't have any, oh, and that one back there naturally. So that's, that Void Weaver's on that one. I think, that's not a Void Weaver, that's a Star, Star Weaver, yeah. And this one's on that objective as well. So you're on all the objectives. So primary-wise, you didn't kill a unit on an objective, but you did take an objective you didn't control, which means you get two points, which means I also got two points I forgot to calculate because my guys ran on an objective I didn't control. So we're tied on primary, but you have five points on the secondary over me right now. As we go to the second battle round, and I'm going into the tactical doctrine as wolves. Naturally, I want to make my way to the assault doctrine, the assault doctrine as soon as possible. 
Just to show the score, currently I will be at six points in primary at the end of my command phase because I'm on one objective, so I'll gain four points from the two I had. And currently six to two command points and five points in secondary for Stefan over there. So I'll use the, I forgot to show it earlier, but the D10s are gonna keep track of primaries and all the secondaries are worth five. So you just, you can get up to nine of them essentially. Some of them are worth two, but they're just tiebreaker ones. You wanna gamble Luck of the Laughing God again and try and get four rerolls? You got one, two, one, oh. one. But you gamble four, so that means you get a command point. So you're at seven for this battle round. And taking a look at my two new cards, I lost, grind them down at the end of Stefan's turn there. So uh, tempting target from last turn. Doable, definitely doable. Uh, Battlefield Supremacy will go hand in hand with that. And then behind enemy lines, I cannot do this turn uh, because uh, I, as much as I have reserves, they are in strategic reserves. So they have to show up on the flanks or my battlefield edge. I can't show up in uh, the Harlequin deployment zone or off their table edge. Man phase, the point I'm, the four points I'm gonna score for, are for this objective here. I have to try and kill things off of objectives that I don't control and take those objectives back. So those guys are primary targets for that. So is that guy over there and this guy. So pretty much kill any of that and I'm good to go. I am gonna try to accomplish all of that while not risking the lives of my characters too heavily. And I'm gonna see what I can accomplish there. It's gonna be a very, this is a volatile as heck game, guys. Like it's nuts how crazy this is gonna go. I kinda wanna do Wisdom of the Ancients for these stupid blood claws over here to help them out, make them a little bit more consistent. It all depends on how well I charge. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna start moving. I'm sure we're just gonna move up, climb up and over this. Climbing up there, which means I'll take the objective. That'll give me two points on primary and help me towards battlefield supremacy. Uh, these two guys are move up this direction. Bjorn moving that way and then the Vendred moving that way. Having to stay a inch away from the front of that guy's hull there. Um, I would like to protect this Wolf Lord. I don't want to throw his life away, uh, but I can't, because I'm playing Harlequins, I can't like risk this back objective. So I think they're just gonna stay still for Bolter Discipline and just shoot their guns. And uh, we're gonna hope for the best. Our Wolf Lord is going to advance. He gets plus one of this because he's got Saga of Jahunter. He's gonna stay right there. Uh, we're gonna keep these guys in combat here. Not that I'm in love with it, but I will. And uh, that should be it for my movement. Nice and simple. A lot of my things are gonna pop in from reserve now though. I'm gonna show you where they end up. They can only show up, they can't show up using that battlefield edge and they have to show up uh, not in your deployment zone either. So I got two in <laughs> That's two, right guys? That's, that's, that's two, right? Yeah. I got two units of Wolfen and a unit of uh, um, Long Fangs. I do, I, I do have three units of Wolfen. I'm just, I'm being a dummy over here. I can't count with my two, fingers. Two, three, one, four. I, I got too many, I got too many Warhammer rules in my head and I can't remember and I don't know how to count my fingers anymore. So I got three units of Wolfen and uh, Long Fangs. So we figured it out. We went very heavy handed on this flank over here. Uh, just to try and like give myself, give myself, if I fail four nine inch charges, well I fail four nine inch charges because the Wolfen can reroll. So I got the, uh, this is the unit I care the most about. That is the unit that's going to kill a infantry squad every turn when you look at them. And I cannot have that be a thing. So I put the multi melters over here to draw, it's the only thing I can really threaten them with. Even though they're six inches further away, the multi melters are luckily 24 inch range. Uh, and we got our dead baby with us. And then I got the, I used the two different bases here to differentiate the units of Wolfen. So these guys are more than nine inches away from the Star Weaver. And then these ones are more than nine inches away as well. Hopefully one of them make the charge because one of them will be able to kill it. And then on the other flank, I only really needed one unit of Wolfen. Because these guys here, they have a seven inch charge to clear that fully and drop all the way down to get within an inch of that. So as long as they make a seven uh, or better, they'll be able to get in. And the Wolfen are back there just in case they make a nine inch charge. They'll be able to jump in there. I decided to keep these guys still, like I said, for Bolter Discipline. I have nothing to do in the Psychic phase, so we are right on to shooting. And boy, are we gonna have some fun. And was like, Luca, why don't your last cannons just fire at the Skyweavers? Well, let me go ahead and tell you that uh, they don't see them. <laughs> they can't see them, there's too much in the way. So I need the multi melters to kind of carry some weight there. Keeping these guys in combat, hopefully they don't die. Uh, so that one Skyweaver in combat there. And uh, you know what, let's just uh, go for broke and start with these multi melters firing into the Skyweavers. I am gonna use a command point on keen senses so they ignore uh, the moving and firing heavy aspect of it. And I'm gonna remember to use my Signum on that guy there. Signum guy on twos. And then we have three other honored friends who have shot a multi melta or two in their time on threes. Uh, okay, it's a good thing I uh, did that plus one to hit. And then these are gonna be twos to wound. Uh, that is five invulnerable saves. And these are, don't, don't roll fours. Then I'll feel bad you got nerfed. All right, no fours yet, heck yeah. So three fails. These are D6 damage each. Would you like to re-roll any of these? Um, 
Yeah, I'll reroll one for a command point. Try and keep them alive, yeah, because they're probably the most valuable thing on the table. No, uh, no, the four! <laughs> that would have saved one. All right, so the first... Um, oh. yeah, I'm going to need to know how many because I have the six up feeling the pain. Oh, okay, so the first one's four damage. Okay. And do you need to make two to live? Uh, you shrug and none. So that's one dead bike. Second damage is going to be only one, which I'm not going to reroll. You have a feel no pain. That's one damage. And then the second one will be one damage. So another six up. And then I think I only got, because you made two saves. So it's just, one's got, one bike's got one wound left, which we got to dive right there. And we're going to use our dead baby to fire the signum again on twos. And twos. One more. Five up in vuln. They're good. Okay, so then all that to kill... Just one jet, yeah, that's Harlequins. <laughs> bolt gun in the squad too. I don't know if he's in range though. Oh, he should be actually. We got one shot with the bolt gun. Could make a difference. Nope. <laughs> the one thing I wanted to kill. Multi melts, don't let me down like that. Come on guys. Let's go Laz cannons. Let's use our signum on the guy back here. So he hits on twos. And I want to fire into a, uh... ooh, you know what? We're going to fire into that transport there. If I can open it up and get its gooey insides, that'd be pretty good. Uh, but you are negative one to hit. And, and, cannot I, re -roll. and I cannot reroll. So four last cannon shots. One on three. And then the other one's on fours. Oh, nice. It mattered. And it's going to wound. And you'll have an inbone. It's... What'd you roll? Four. Four. Uh-oh. It's going to deal four damage. Not dead, though. It is a pretty devastating hit to it. It's a light vehicle, but it's got a lot of, like, elusiveness to it. Let's go with uh, Papa Bjorn firing backwards into it. He's got a auto... A auto cannon. Assault cannon. And, uh... Then the heavy flamer afterwards. So assault cannon, negative one to hit, can't reroll. Uh, these all hit. These wound on. Your toughness five or, you know what? Four wounds. Four wounding hits, and they're all minus one, which means you have a five up. Either way. And up two. That's two. That's enough to kill him. Does he explode? Does he? Or does he just evade, evade the battlefield? Two. Two. He just nope. We're gonna disembark its contents, and that transport's like, you guys get out, <laughs> and. Uh, Die. I'll see you later. <laughs> I generally end up around where I was. Uh, and uh, let's see if they've done this song and dance before. Let's see if they survived the evacuation as the transport uh, scurries. And once. Not a single one of them died. They're all good. That does prevent grinding them down, unless you kill stuff in the uh, following combat phase. Makes that wolf and charge harder, but their charge easier. Actually, no, it's the exact same. Ha! <laughs> it's the exact same. So it's a tennis charge for the wolf and now. All right. Uh, huh. What do I want to do over here? Let's do... Interesting. Let's do his Stormbolter into the uh, uh, Skyweavers. Okay. Only a couple shots. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Bolter, those, are, those rounds go to space. Those are space bullets. All right, these Gray Hunters are next. They don't really have a whole lot of targets, though. Interesting. I actually don't think they're going to fire anything. They don't have the range to fire at the Skyweavers because they're near the Shadows here. Uh, they could put the shots over that way, but that's just going to scuff up some of my charges here. Oh, but if they don't make their 7 inch charge, then they're just sitting there free to go. So I'll put whatever shots I can over there, I guess. Yeah, they can all see those two there. They're gonna, all the bolters are gonna rapid fire. Uh, the melt -a gun is not gonna fire. That guy's got a sword, so he's not gonna fire. Uh, yes. Back in the We're gonna do one shot with the plasma gun. It hits, it wounds. You have one dancing elf save, one happy dancing elf save. That is not a happy dancing elf, stop rolling force. Would have been. No, we don't, no one's been. No one, no one needs to, no. That's not a happy, dead. that's a dead dancing elf save. He starts uh, convulsing on the ground, actually. It's kind of sad. So we'll do 14 bolter shots because of bolter discipline. Uh, you're not negative to hit or anything like that, are you, on the guys on the ground? Probably not. Uh, it's only two wounds so far. The second volley is going to be an additional three wounds. So five saves. Minus one, which would be five up happy dancing elf saves. The only negative one to hit in melee. All right, so happy dancing elf saves. That is going to be... Four dead happy dancing elves. Yeah, they are all out of here. Boom, 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 boom. The, uh, oh, the nerf, like we just uh, discussed off camera, the nerf was a little much. Uh, it was definitely heavy handed. <laughs> I, am, uh, <laughs> I am not opposed to saying that, that is for sure. But uh, it is what it I is, I guess. I would have walked away with like two guys yeah, gone. Yet. Yeah. Well, I still would have had the charge and everything too, but now like hypothetically, would they have made the charge? They would have failed the charge. How about the woman over there? With a reroll, they would have failed. They would have made the charge. Oh, they would have been dead anyways. In this game. Now, that's just like a hindsight thing. Uh, okay, well, then we're going to go ahead and continue with our shooting, which uh, actually we're done. We're on the charging. So I have no charges. Those are the mock charges over there to see if I would have got those little guys there, but I didn't need to. So Bjorn's going to declare a charge into the Void Weaver. Would you like to overwatch with your big gun and shuriken cannon? Or just let me charge you. 
Probably save the Overwatch for the uh, transfer over there. So Bjorn charging. Uh, eight is math. Bjorn is going to charge just to right there. And then we're going to have our uh, Wolf Lord declare a charge against both targets. Okay. He gets plus one of this. We actually go six. I actually, I probably, mm, probably shouldn't do that because you'd overwatch him. Screw it. I'll charge with him anyways. I'll just lock it in. Would you like to overwatch with that one guy over there into the Wolf Lord to try and kill him? Or save it for over there. We're going to save it. All right. Because it's not like it's only a couple shots in the shuriken, so it might not and do I it. I have to hit sixes. And yeah. I haven't been rolling well enough to warrant. Yeah, I can roll a six. <laughs> he'll, he'll tuck himself in there. This one, this Vendred is going to just declare a charge against. Uh, ah, it's tough. That's a, that? You'd have to roll a big charge. Yeah, I know. It's going to have to go up and around there. It's going to be. A, I'm just going to go with the Void Weaver in front of me. Eight. He probably wouldn't have made it over there. I'll have him go right here, though. There we go. We have some of the more suspect charges over here. These are two nine inch charges with the Wolfen, but they're both re rollable. So start with this squad. Uh, dramatic. That's a fail, but they are Wolfen and they have an aura of re rolls. That's a fail. Now we're going to do the other squad declaring charge. I'm going to overwatch that. That one. squad there. They do make their charge though. Okay. So they're going to make it in, but they're going to need an overwatch. That's the second squad charging. That's first. Yep. Two shuriken cannons. It'll be six shots. We have a hit, and it'll be winning on A3. Uh, that's a one. And then we have the guys inside. Two fusion pistols. Beep, beep, ice. Oh, oh, you can only overwatch for a unit. I don't think the guys inside can overwatch because that's a separate unit you'd have to spend the command points on. I don't know if you can legally target them, but I do dodge that. I don't that. think I, like, yeah. also the, the fusion pistols are only a six inch. True, there's so that as well, you're, yeah. You're too far away to do that. Let's go, Wolfen! We're just going to be just outside. I don't think you got enough Wolfen in there to take it out. You don't think so? You don't think these five Wolfen got it? No. <laughs> no, there's no way, dude. No, not a chance. Not a chance. No. This guy's going to go you up and around. Boom. Boom, that's it. Uh, you can counter offensive somewhere. Uh, so I don't think there's a good counter offensive anywhere really other than that guy there who's already gonna get to attack. I don't really actually know where I wanna go first. I don't think it really matters. So I'm gonna go with Bjorn. Uh, he is gonna pile in around this claw. I'm guessing get closer tear to it. it up. We're gonna try to tear it up. <laughs> We're gonna try. All right, we have six attacks on. You're negative one to hit, but I'm plus one to hit. So two, six don't matter yet. We're not quite on the third battle round. That's only for shooting. Oh, I was only shooting, gotcha. Uh, I wound you on threes, but I get to reroll because I'm Bjorn with True Claw. Five saves at Inbalm. Just a casual 5d6 damage or d6 damage per fail. You, do you, happy, uh, you happy alpha dance two of them. Three of them are going to go through for a total of uh, 11 damage. Does he explode? <laughs> nope, nope, but he does take a big chunk of them as he flies off the battlefield to go and uh, say, this ain't worth it, you know? <laughs> he will consolidate about to here. We're just going to keep pushing up with them. And would you like to counter offensive anywhere before I swing? Uh, I, I don't get to go first there, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're already good there. Uh, no point in interrupting anywhere. So I'm going to continue this uh, this show here, and I'm going to have you just turn around to face the enemy, and we're going to tuck you in a little bit there, and you're going to attack with your frost claws. Now you got D. So shock salt. I mean, I. Oh. Oh. Okay, I am going to spend the command point to go down to five, and I am going to interrupt with that Void Weaver just because he has two wounds left. And there's a very small Ooh, percentage chance. That that's saucy. Okay. Five attacks says it's Twilight. I hope this doesn't mean the end of my Wolf Lord. I like him. Three's hit because it's, uh, I know the Elf Eagles do hit. So you got three hits. Not bad. And strength is probably five or six. It is five. So threes to wound. That's four of them. Three. Oh, sorry. Three of them. My bad. AP is, ooh, hopefully none. Okay. We're, those are all invulns. All of them. He's good. Oh, damn, actually kind of close, though. <laughs> it would have been all two-up saves. Right, at at this point, yeah, shot. anything you can get. So we are going to go ahead with our D3 attacks from uh, Shock Assault on him. So an extra three attacks. So that'll be three. Got four base. And then he's got one for every Lightning Claw. <laughs> and the Frost Claw, so they're two damage each and uh, an extra strength. So he's hit on twos. Okay, uh, we miss three of them. I believe these are your T5, you said? Yeah. So I wound five six times your strength five and then you make no happy you make one, one happy dancing else so that's 10 damage and he explodes or, or he leaves the battlefield but does he explode before he gets uh no, no. that's a one so he leaves the battlefield and he gets caught by the wolf lord and then uh i'm going to attack with the venerable dreadnought he charged so he's able to pile in and consolidate he's just going to use that to go that's a pile in and then that's a consolidate just to kind of block the wolf lord a little bit the last thing are the wolfen over here. Uh, we are gonna just get a little closer there, closer there, up and over. Uh, these guys, I gotta look up the rules a little bit, but 
Three thunder hammers in there. They're gonna be four attacks each. So that's one, two. After. Uh, plus one to hit and negative one to hit for thunder hammers. So threes. And Wolfen are always in the assault doctrine, no matter what the turn is. So that's gonna be two extra hits. I'll just leave two of the misses in there. And uh, strength ten. So twos, I guess. But it doesn't matter. I got all threes there. So you got nine happy dancing elf saves. Nine happy dancing elf saves. I and mean, not. Nope. One, two, three, four, five made it, so four only go through. That's 12 damage. It's still dead. It's still dead. Uh, and then uh, does he explode before we put the guys down? Boop, 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 boop. Six. Yes. He does explode. Interesting. Within six takes a mortal wound, which will be my wolf and, and the sky weavers, but you have a shrug on them. So let's see if they ignore it. And the guys inside are fine too. They don't have to worry about it yet. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, the just one guy. it's only one guy takes a mortal oh. wound. Yeah, it's, but that it just, they all failed anyway. So one of them, one of them dead, and then my wolf and just take a mortal wound. That guy's gonna. We'll say the wounds are allocated on. Let's just say, keep them coherent. The wounds are allocated on the guy over there. It keeps them fine. They don't have to like lose anyone to coherence issues. That rule's only in play to stop like degenerate plays. Like, it doesn't need to exist for like oops, just like quickly allocating wounds. And then we're gonna have uh, the little troop end up around here. And I gotta take a mortal wound. I will take a wound on, I guess, one of the thunder hammers because they're gonna eat the, sa eat the damage later anyway. So might as well be on a thunder hammer guy. Plus I don't need all that big damage too much anymore. All right, and then uh, they're gonna be good. Yep, get the shrugs. And then how many of them survived the song and dance? Some of them might get caught in the explosion. Uh, none of them do though. Nice, that's the elf way. And that will be the end of my charge. Oh, they get to consolidate. Uh, I don't want to drag you in, so I'm just going to move forward. So I'll stay outside of an inch, though, with their consolidate. Excellent. Okay, uh, then you get to fight with that one sky we were into my Terminators. Into Hitting all threes. They only actually have four attacks. Just roll it up and just don't... I'll just... Yeah, it's all the same. Three, three hits and wounding on threes. Because it's good strength. And it's got great AP. Three of them. Got three invulns. I will make... One and fail two. Ooh. Two damage. That means I don't get to fight with him. And I, even if I reroll, he's still dead. So that means my leader will have one wound. And uh, would you like to consolidate in the combat with my guy? So I can fight you back and kill you? <laughs> or is that a no? That's probably a no. Okay. And that will be it. Uh, morale. I don't think there is any to take. Uh, These guys. They lost two? They're bravery eight. They can't fail. Okay. This should be good. Leader should be, sorry. Uh, and that's it. So I get, for primary, I'll get two, three points for killing a unit on an objective I didn't control and then controlling an objective. That'll put me at nine points for primary. And then secondaries, I have battlefield supremacy because I am on at least, uh, well, at least three of the objectives and more than the Harlequins. I don't think I'm, I think I'm only on mine. Yeah, you're only on yours. And I got the tempting target from last turn. I do not have behind enemy lines but I'm gonna keep it, I think, because I got units threatening it right there and right there. And here we uh, currently are with our score. So we're both, I got two of my secondary scored to Stefan's one, six to three command points still, six to nine victory points. So I'm up, I'm up uh, on the victory points on primary and secondary for now, but let's go take a look at what the Harlequins draw. Should note from last turn, uh, Grand Them Down was not achieved. Neither one of us got our Grand Them Downs. Uh, you have, uh, you have uh, Assassinate from last turn still. We drew Raised Banners in the Area of Denial. Both of these are going to be rather difficult because Raised Banner has to be an objective in No Man's Land and the Area of Denial is an impossible objective. So, probably best to spend a command point to get rid of one of these. We draw instead Overwhelming Firepower to kill three units of shooting, which is doable. One unit with one wound there for shooting. And then if somebody could fly behind him and assassinate him, that might do it too. Because uh, you do have the mobility as Harlequins, I assume, I would hope. <laughs> right to the movement phase, nothing to really do in the command phase. The troupe is coming over here. Oh, this is with the troop master too. So the troop master and the troupe come over this way to come tangle with these guys. Don't love that. That was here is gonna go with the troupe. Second thought, we're gonna back rub just a little bit to stay on the objective. The sky weavers are jumping up and over my wolfen. We got a couple options here and I have to... I guess, yeah, this is kind of pushing in pretty heavily over here. <laughs> Condensing your forces to the one corner. I have to try and take what I can get. Take, take this corner back for the Harlequins. I like it. That's going to be it for movement. We're on to shoot. Oh, the Har oh, what's the solitaire want to do? Do you want to commit anywhere? Is he... No, I, I, like I said, I'm going to leave him where he is. Okay. And he's going to kind of be my little utility depending on where I need to charge him because he's in a decent distance to charge either way a few yeah things so we'll nope. see where he's needed all right where you want to start the shooting off uh psychic phase first oh true i forgot that yes yes so um 
here. I'm going to do my Feel No Pain bubble again. Six up, seven. two ignore damage. Seven. Seven, sorry, six to seven cast. That is a six. Uh, you have five command points still. You're gonna try and reroll, getting a six, six again, eh? Okay, well, it didn't help too much last turn, but right. could have so been clutch here. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do web, uh, Webway Dance. Oh, okay. Which I, no. was that? That was Webway Dance. Well, that's what Sorry, you no, that, that was, uh, Webway Dance is the one, no, I don't. Don't wanna do that one, because they can't charge. Okay, I am just going to smite. Smite. Smiting, looking for a five. it's gonna be them, no. Yeah, it'd probably be the wolfing, but you could line it up to whoever you want, really, whatever you prefer to go for. Yeah, and move doesn't phase. matter to me. Five up. Dead, D3 mortal wounds. Who's it gonna be? One, oh. that's a dead wolfing. Bloop. And a bloop. Bye bye, Storm Shield. Into your commander. Death Jester into my wolf lord. See if you take him out. Can't do much about it. Okay. Live! Sixes. Live. Sixes. Live. You can reroll that four. You got two hits so far. And a hit. Three hits. God, you only need one to get through to kill him. Three's to wound. Two of them, eh? All right. Well, I'd say he dies, but I have a reroll if I need it. Invulnerable and reroll. He's dead. He gets death gestured. That will be a that's assassinate accomplished as well. And that's one tick for warming firepower. And I can no longer run and charge with my core nearby because he finished the saga of the hunter last turn. So no longer can my venerable dreadnought run and charge. He's it's going to shoot his haywire cannon into. That one does still have a haywire. That's still haywire, guys. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, nice. Haywire cannon over into this guy here. D3 plus one shots. It's not like overly strong against the Terminators, but it's got good AP. So it's going to be three shots. Four total. Four total, sorry. Yeah, hitting on threes. And wounding on fives, because it's only strength three. Well, that's not bad. That's all hit. Now you need to see that roll again. <laughs> and I have no re-rolls to save him. If he gets shot dead, that's another point for... That's... A four and a one five. No, nope. no wounds. I couldn't even Gonna have to command point it to get that five up. You got him. Excellent. Now, do I put my shield up, or is he? Oh, he succumbs to the haywire round. He's already on his last leg, anyways. There you go. That's two for overwhelming firepower. These guys have quite a bit of shots, so if you can get them low enough, then they could probably finish him off. The two bikes firing See into how the wolf. Yeah, no blast here, so that's not bad average. Hitting on threes. That's two hits. That's not bad. Two fails, though. And threes to wound. Strength seven. T4. Uh, oh, well, no reroll. Oh, we got the shuriken, though. The shuriken could still help out. It's two damage each. That's going to be six. Sh it's three shots per, so six. Sh threes. Okay, not bad. And threes with good AP on six to wound. Okay, all wounds. So two, four wounds. Two yeah. with good AP. Two with good AP. I'll try and knock them out first on the storm shields. Shields both of them. And then the ones that are... They're actually all four. Okay, I just make all my saves. That is probably going to be it. But we still have some a little bit more shooting to do here. We have two troupes. So the two fusion pistols. Into them first. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Got a hit. And a two to wound for fusioni. That's wounds. a wound. Uh, go ahead and roll the y'all. I'll do that save first and do the blasters afterwards or the because we're already over here. There's three more uh, shuriken pistols. Uh, okay, that same storm shield is going <laughs> to... He's just deflecting all the shots. He's going he's gonna to keep deflecting all those shots. Uh, there is one fusion here. Hit. And that's going over here? Yeah. Alright. And that's a wound. Uh, it's gonna go, it's AP4. Uh, roll a d6 damage, this guy's gonna take it. He is dead. <laughs> and shuriken pistols. Ooh, wow. Okay, one hit. Alright, so you get two turns of bad shooting. <laughs> As Harlequins. Off the rip, that's okay. <laughs> the grenade launcher on the uh, Shadow Seer. Where does she want to shoot that? I'm just gonna go in there. I think you remember doing mortal wounds or something like that. Yeah, so it's D3 shots. One, naturally. Oh, uh, is it a blast? Because I got six dudes. Instead, that's actually gonna be three shots. Uh, shots, a hit. So for every one that roll, or these two that roll over your leadership, it's a mortal wound. Ah, it's one of those, yeah. It's, that's kind of what it sounds like. So nope. nope. So second one, and eh, nope. Third Should one. Shot at them, they probably have worse leadership. I actually have no idea. I think you would just, did you roll all sixes and sevens? Because I think they're exactly seven as well. Yeah, another thing didn't quite work out for the Harlequins there. I think we're on to charging. Charging into the Wolfing, because everything here is going to Hero Convene, so you might as well go down and... Uh, that's good enough. <laughs> yeah. Go down in glory and fight first and get your extra attacks. Uh, do these bikes want to charge? Yep. Because these guys get Hero Convene yep. into them, so they might as well charge into them and double up on them. Good enough. Being outside of their six. Yeah, and then 
he's gonna charge. Uh, so sorry, the solitaire or the sky weaver? Solitaire. Solitaire declaring a charge. He will charge. He has plus six, though, I assume. Yeah. He always gets plus six, yeah. What a dummy. Look how fast he is. He's glorious. Right, do you want the troop master and the troop to charge, or just the troop master? Uh, the troop is going to charge first, and then the troop master is right. going to charge troop. In, so you're not overwatching <laughs> to death. The troop A first. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, yeah, they're probably in. They make it in, and then the true master actually rolls an 11, so he's gonna hang out in here with us. And uh, that is uh, it for charges over here. How about that Sky Weaver? Does he feel like charging anything? <laughs> He'll try and uh, go for a wolf and charge. He doesn't need that far. Six, seven inches? Mm. Doesn't quite make it. He's gonna try and. Ah, oh, three is even worse. Okay. One command point down, and he's just gonna hang out right there and uh, keep die. it real. <laughs> whoa, 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 not die. He's gonna keep it real. <laughs> that will be it for charges. All right, where do you, uh, well, this is definitely one of those, uh, I mean, So where are you going to heroically intervene? Are you going to come this way or are you going to come that way? Too far. They're both too far away. Oh, they can go up to six. So up to there, like up to there. So uh, you're safe. They can't do much. And I can't heroically intervene either there, uh, over there either. Okay. Now, the rock and the hard place for you is these guys fight when they die. And I can interrupt over here. <laughs> so it's not ideal either way. Probably want to fight here first because it's scuffed no matter what. That's, they get free interrupt in a way. Yeah. Uh, the troop, troop master. master there to be all kinds of nasty. All right, we get to find out what your old warlord does. Mine, mine killed the transport then got shot by a, an assassin. So he didn't have much of a glorious uh, time there. But he, you know what? I'll, I'll pretend he's not dead. I'll imagine he's not dead. He's just uh, incapacitated for now. So we got seven attacks on the charge. Uh, with, uh, Seo, Seo Gorak, che, che, I don't even know, che, Seo Gorak, che, che Gorak. uh, Rose, his, his Rose. Uh... All right, let's see what he's got. These are probably twos to hit to start with. Yes. Because he's, uh, he's gone to sword school for a little bit. Actually, I don't know if this is really a sword. He's got one miss. Uh, yeah. 25, three swoon, and fives are good because I can't take in bones against them. And I can re-roll these. Uh, it's re -rolled. that's right. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I see a five and uh, one fail, so might as well reroll the fail. I just want to make them all, but yeah, whatever. I get armor stays all the same. All right, all wound, and these are three damage per minus three AP. I am gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna start with the no invuln one first, and we're just gonna, we're gonna put all those saves on the multi meltas, then the sergeant, then the terminator, because these multi meltas are done. <laughs> but the guy with the chainsaw, the thunder hammer, still have value. So I am gonna do these four at a time for the multi meltas. And then uh, these are six ups. I will make one of them, so that's three dead. And then uh, another six up. He lands, and then the last one. All right, so he killed the four multi meltas. A one, a two, a three, and a four. All right, they are dead. Uh, would you like to consolidate or keep him there? Boop, they're next. All right, fair. And they get to fight next because I'm not going to bother interrupting over here. They, so these guys couldn't interrupt because they were more than an inch away. Then when they pile in, they get to fight. So they're kind of safe that way. Just make room for that guy to get in and swing. They're so tiny and dainty. We're going to attack with their fancy swords, but we're going to spend a command point on the Harlequin's Kiss stratagem because this one there has the Harlequin's Kiss. So sorry, I'm having a hard time enunciating that. Uh, six to wound will do a mortal wound in addition to their normal damage. And they have uh, five attacks each on the charge. These are threes to hit. Whoa. All right. Some misses, I'll say some for sure. Not that they miss, it's more like my guys parried some of those blows. You know, that's kind of how I like to look at it. <laughs> Gone are the days of comparing weapon skill though. I mean, they would have had good weapon skill anyways. Fives to wound with the Harlequin's Blade, but really look for sixes. Ooh, that is... One, two, three. Ah, that's sad for me. I don't want the... That's gonna finish my Terminator off. Okay. Can't do much about that. AOU, uh, many saves, that's eight saves that are all minus one. So these are all minus, so I gotta do these two at a time. I, this guy would have to tank. This guy would have to tank every single one of these damage, or at least he can let one through. So he, that's the one he's allowed to let through. And if he fails any of these other ones, the unit's dead. Okay, there you go. So I know that the Terminator has two up saves against him because he's got a Storm Shield, but then the Terminator would just take three mortal wounds afterwards and die, so it doesn't really matter. That does finish off my multi melt squad. They show up, they kill one of the bikes and die. <laughs> gonna consolidate over there. And then that guy, I forgot to move him in, but then he's gonna up there. All right, we got this nonsense over here. Which one would you like to fight with first? It's uh, all around. I assume that once the dust settles, there'll be nothing left here. <laughs> You'll kill my guys. I'm going to kill you right back, though. So Solitaire's going to go first. He's got quite a bit of attacks, especially on the charge. These are twos, I assume. Yep. He's uh, one of the better fighters in the, in the game. And uh, what strength is this? Uh, six. Oh, two, three two. Was there anything fancy on sixes here or no? Uh, just the five when he hits then. Well, not just, but... Same guy with the storm shield is gonna AP3. AP3? Alright, we're gonna do all storm shield guys. I got 
two storm shield guys in there, so that's one dead. Uh, tanks, he's got one wound left, and he's dead. So both the storm shield guys are dead. And they die. Does he have any more attacks? He doesn't, but the, the other guys do. Does. So when he's done his attacks, these two storm shield guys fight right now. Okay. So this one's gonna fight this way. Uh, are they both gonna fight that way? No, we're gonna put one back there and one's gonna go forward. One going backwards into the bikes on threes, and two's to wound. And that's with negative one to hit? Uh, uh, they're already, ne oh wait, are you negative one to hit the bikes normally? Bikes, because they have the Okay, so let me reroll that. So, because I'm plus one to hit, so I'm hitting on fours. Okay, so we got three hits because of the six. Two's to wound, so three wounds on the bikes. Okay. And that kills t both the bikes, because they're three damage each. And then the thunder hammer's forward. Uh, are they negative one to hit as well? Yeah, they have mass. Yes. Yeah, uh, same idea. So four is to hit, uh, one hit, two to wound. Uh, you have one happy dancing elf save, so that's a two. And that is a four. So one happy dancing elf is no longer happy. And this guy's dead. Boop, boop. All right, that guy's dead as well. So I got two wolfen left. This squad gets to attack. So many of them. Just, are they just regular Harlequin's blades as well? No, these ones have uh, kisses and caresses and all that stuff. Ooh. Oh yeah, they actually don't have any blades in there at all. They got fancy other weird melee punchy weapons. And then strength on these are four, I assume? Uh, four is to wound. I don't really have much of a save. I only have four ups normally. What's the AP on these? Oh, they're, uh, my, they're all dead. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother. They're both the Wolfen are dead. I'm gonna put both their attacks into the Harlequins who attacked. Because I don't think I can take out the Solitaire just yet. It's a four up in Vuln save, but I'd rather just try and take out the, the troop there. I honestly wish they were swapped because I'd like the pack leader to attack them and him to attack there, but I'm just going to put all the attacks that way. Oh, oh it's so tempting to go, no, I'll do, yeah, I'll do it, uh, the, this, it, with I'll both into that one squad there. So the pack leader has five attacks, uh, plus one hit, but negative one to hit. So I'm hitting on threes. We have six hits because of the six twos with shred. So you have six happy dancing else. Elf saves. Five ups and you lose four of them. Hey, the troop master is alive. And the Great Frost Axe is uh, four attacks, because I got charged. Uh, back to three state. Only one hit, two to wound. One happy dancing elf save. And it's two damage. So he gets crushed. All right. Boom. So we have just the solitaire left, and you kill my wolfen. Okay, I was wrong. The solitaire stands alone. It's chill there. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, there was a whole lot less models on this table. <laughs> you were able to take most of this corner back for yourself, too, which... Uh, at the sacrifice of majority of myself. <laughs> it only costs some things. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Okay, fair. I've got a Death Jester. Got it. Oh, I, I admit, I think this is the longest the characters have all survived. All, all four characters still alive. You've got one Troop. Troop Master, Satter Seer, Death Jester, and Solitaire are unscathed at the moment. No damage on any of them. I have no... I got Bjorn. Bjorn's still alive. Okay, I see what's up. Um, yeah, on to uh, no morale to do. I don't have any, we've completely cleared out everything we have. So onto your, you definitely get, ooh, you're at two for overwhelming firepower because you whiff so heavily over here on the yes, wolf end. Yeah, because that was disappointing. So you need one more for overwhelming firepower. Yep. Assassination is done. Yeah, we did get assassinate and raise the banner was not accomplished. We're going to get rid of raise the banners. We're going to keep overwhelming firepower because we only have to kill one more unit with shooting. And like the death jester's there, anything that's kind of weak, you might be able to pick that off and uh, make that happen somewhere. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna go on to oh, and then at the end of your turn, you did kill a unit on an objective, so you get two victory points. And but you did not take an objective you didn't control, so just the two victory points. Still good though. We go sideways on primaries where I get twelve points for majority of the objectives, th two and more than uh, Stefan and the Harlequins here. And we got to kind of keep you stay over you stay over in this corner, and I'll stay over here, and we'll all be happy, happy securing our facility. All that stuff. Harlequins refuse. So currently at two secondary scored each, uh, and then we're damn close on the wall. I, I, I do score my 12 now, but we're all around pretty close, but the Harlequins are taking a pretty heavy hit. It's a, there's a cost to this. All right, let's take a look at my objectives. I still have behind enemy lines because I felt confident I could do it this turn. Assassination. And now we have extended battle lines as well. I'm just gonna have to fight over there, get the Wolfen over there, and then have one of these Dreadnoughts go for that. I already have extended battle lines with that objective there. They're probably just gonna camp it and just hang out up there for the most part. Last cam's gonna stay still. These guys are gonna stay still because uh, I can't risk leaving the objectives even though they're sticky for me. They're still a pain in the butt all around to uh, try and uh, keep the Harlequins away from them in case I like don't kill them or something. Anyways, uh, on a movement, because I have nothing else to really do. I am going to move these Wolfen. We move eight. Boom, so they're going to move to about here. Oof. Just coming over this. So we're going to try and clear this out, or at least start putting pressure on the characters back there. Boop, 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 boop. Ignore that solitaire for as long as I can, I guess. Uh, 
And then Bjorn is going to move, and so is the Vendred. Bjorn stays out. Again, the middle is this, so Bjorn's going to stay out in the deployment zone. Those Wolfen are going to hopefully jump into it, but to try and guarantee it, those Wolfen are going to advance. They move eight, plus a glorious D6 of two. All right. Nice. All right, so those Wolfen don't quite make it into your deployment zone. I'm going to reroll the advance roll. Can you add an extra three inches in their direction, please? Thank you, are Stefan. Are you sure they're not in? Like, I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, they have to be wholly within it. The whole oh. the whole squad has to be in there. I think if you were lagging out, just adding the three, just to get them further in there too, because uh, I have three command points. I'm not going to do anything with it. After they dash over there, I am uh, done. We're going to go right on to shooting. Let's start with. Uh, he's going to put a storm bolter into the sh the solitaire. He's kind of just hanging out there. Might as well try and get like a damage or something on him. Uh, is there any negatives to the solitaire in shooting? No. All right. So two to hit because he's venerable. Uh, four saves, I guess. Naturally, we're in the assault doctrine with wolves. Uh, so I get no extra AP here, but you just have your invulns. Uh, unless you have a three-up armor save. Uh, I do not, and I have a four-up invul, so I stop one of those. Nice. He takes a casual three damage from a storm bolt here. Uh, I'm not going to bother firing these guys because they have no targets. And uh, Bjorn, you know what? Let's do let's do the last cannons. That's a little bit funnier. We do four last cannons into the death jester, just uh, just to get that. <laughs> it's literally a cross the table fight here. <laughs> And no, uh, no dents in the way, so just clear shots. I'm going to signum uh, one of the four. Dodge a wrench. You can, you can dodge, dodge a last cannon. The last cannon shot. So here's the two. So a bad dodge. Uh, well, I guess the dodge is the invuln, really. Threes. So they, they're on target. He's like, oh, crap, here they come. Uh, if they hit, one of them will just be off his coat. Uh, three of them, though, he's going to like, oh, he's got to dodge three shots. Can you do it? He'll dodge. Let's do dramatic effect one at a time. First one. He dodges. All right. Does he dodge it in the second one, though? No. All right, so he he, he dodged out of the first one, but the, the third one does three damage to him. He's not dead. I, wait, how many was there? Four at least, right? Two ones left. Can he make the last dodge? Bo, 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 bo. No. So he dodges into two of the last cannons and takes a further... Ooh, I'll command point that for damage. Oh, exactly enough to kill him. Boink. <laughs> That's assassinate. Only waiting. Oh, you, feel, you failed to feel no pain power. Oh, you rolled right, a six. Right, yeah, we even got the reroll. That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay, I forgot. Good job. 100 point last cannon team. <laughs> Technically, I have the ablative wound, so it's like... Uh, uh, they are, they're 23, the last cannons are free now <laughs> in, the, in the newest update. So the last cannons cost is literally zero points. So like why not? 23 points a model. So you're paying 23 points for a guy with the bolt gun who could upgrade to a last cannon for free. I don't have the model though. So uh, just the ablative wound in this case. I guess well, I like could- grenade launchers? I get, no, I don't think the Wolfen can take grenade launchers anymore. Maybe? Yeah, they can. They can? I just realized I'm so used to, because long fangs can buy four special, up to five special weapons in the unit and go to six with the sergeant. Uh, and then I always just take the extra guy for the ablative of Wounds for like the free dead guy But all their heavy weapons are free now So I might as well always make this guy like a plasma cannon or a missile launcher because why not? I, I love my zero point last cannons. Okay, uh, on to Bjorn. He's, <laughs> oh, yeah. gonna, he's gonna fire everything into this guy here. I'll just do the uh, assault cannon because I don't feel like measuring the, uh, the heavy flamer. He's also got me by like... There we go. And I think I wound you on threes. I do. So two invuln, two happy dancing elf saves. Happy a five up! Okay. I got one! <laughs> He's got two wounds left. That's, uh, I don't even know why I bother firing that. All right. <laughs> Apparently, the Wolfen still take these uh, uh, frag launchers, but you had to pay points for them before, but you better believe that they're free. Everything on the Wolfen is free. Is it free? Is it free? Uh, like, like, it's like, well, technically, you have to pay five points for the... One of these... Two of the weapons are cost points. I think it's the Thunder Hammers and the Storm Shields cost points. Uh, and then the axe cost points, but the, the claws are free, and the claws are arguably the best weapon, too. Well, the storm shields are good because you get the invul. The axe is whatever. The claws are really good, and so are the uh, thunder hammers, only because they take the storm shields. But you pay five points for a storm shield, so why not? D3 shots blast. So what these used to be, the only freaking reason they have these is because in 7th edition, uh, they couldn't justify giving Wolfen frag and crack grenades because they're not, like tactically sound enough to do it. They're literally berserking werewolves. So they added these automated f storm frag launchers on their backs to like assault the enemy position before the assault so they don't have to suffer the, um, whenever you charge through difficult terrain in the older editions, you'd fight it at initial step one. So they had these automated things you could put on their backpacks, which were like super worth. So they'd fight at their initiative. But then because they had the bit, they had to give them something in eighth edition. So like, oh, here's like D3 strength four shots that hit on fives, pay points for it. No, thank you. I don't think I will. So here's the uh, shots. Uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. I'm just gonna do, and they hit on fives, guys. So uh, it's two hits, uh, three hits. That wound on threes, and then you have three happy dancing elf saves. So uh, take that, two dead elves to uh, storm frag uh, to the automated grenade launchers. Let's do uh, do a charge. They're gonna charge both. Would you uh, like to Overwatch on either one of them? 
I don't even know. Nope. No, nope. all right. Boom. Hey, look, 10. Wow, that's a big charge. So we'll go up and Can around here. Can you use the command point yet? Uh, no. Uh, I did it earlier on the damage for my last Oh, game. I never rolled for my... Oh, laugh, luck of the laughing god. All right, let's, let's do that before I do this. Stefan wants some luck of the laughing god when he's got two models left. You still fail it. You still fail luck of the laughing god. I'll have you guys know, before it got nerfed, a lot of you probably know, you got three base plus whatever you gambled. So every battle round, you'd be like, I'm going to gamble one and get four rerolls uh, every battle round, plus all my command points for free. <laughs> I'm happy that got nerfed. The rest, a you little. You should give them one. You should start with one then per get turn. Three rerolls every turn because you're always going to be able to. Like, look at this. You're going to get three rerolls free. It's like three free command points a battle round. Yeah, look. Yeah. And now you probably just want to do two sets of two because it's uh, not likely you're going to roll uh, two of the same, really. But if you could gamble three, three's, three's where it gets like a little wonky. Hey, three rerolls. That's not bad. Anyway, sorry, guys. I got distracted. I am going to go with my Vendred declaring a charge against the Weaver. Uh, three, good enough. <laughs> uh, and that is about it. I am going to fight first over here, because if you interrupt, these guys have to fight when they die anyway, so it doesn't really... I'm just going to fight first over here, because that guy's literally not going to die. All right, so let's do... What kind of invulnerable save, what kind of defenses does your uh, Troupe Master have? The Troupe Master, I believe he has a four up. Okay. I could be wrong. He's got a Happy Dancing Elf save, so that's pretty much it. So uh, let's go Frost Claws from the pack leader. They are negative one to hit. Okay, good to know, actually. I do get plus one hit, that'll be good for the Thunder Hammer. So I'm gonna do uh, these two models into the Harlequin. So that's the Great uh, great Frost Axe and the Frost Claws and then three Thunder Hammers. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, we're gonna forge them into uh, non-existence. Uh, so negative one to hit him, because he's got a fancy mask. So these are threes to hit after everything is said and done. Uh, no, fours actually, fours, because it's negative two. So these all miss, but we got three sixes, which means boom, three more hits because we're space wolves. Uh, these are going to be twos to wound, because it's strength 10. Uh, one fail. And that is uh, five happy anything else saves. Uh, plus three, because I actually rolled uh, eight saves. Yeah, it's eight. I, only, I said five, because I clustered five together, and then I forgot there's three more there. Uh, five ups. And they're all on the master. These are all on the master, yep. All right. So that's, uh, this is how you make uh, troop master into uh... <laughs> You know what? Fair. Absolutely fair. <laughs> Boom, yeah, exactly. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 15 damage. Yeah, yeah. That's, he died three times over, I think, around that. Uh, then we gotta claw them up. Claws, which should be actually six attacks on threes, cause you're negative on the hit. And, all right, cool. Just seven happy anything else saves. And survey says, uh, nope, they are dead. All right. Survey says dead elves. Dead elves, uh, so that would have been, cause there was only yeah, it's like because the guy with two wounds and the two other guys. And then they're going to consolidate to the woods. Aha, we smell a nerd in the woods. We're going to go get the nerd. Dread. Would you like to counter offensive and fight no. before I do? No? What? <laughs> five attacks Just on the charge. Uh, they all hit but one. Oh, actually, all hit five hit. <laughs> and huh, there we go. Four happy dancing elf saves. Four. Okay, here we go. And boom. Look. Oh, he actually did. He did. Just, you could reroll if you wanted to and keep him alive. Try to. He failed one of them. Point and. Nope. Alright, he's dead. He only had two wounds left anyways from the shooties. But, uh, there we go. That is it. That is the end of my turn. And there are uh, exactly two elves left. One nerd and one solitaire. For those of you looking to watch another 40k battle report, you could check out the links below if you're either a vault member or a paid YouTube member and watch my game of Harlequins versus Salamanders. Check that out and enjoy the post game. I mean, at best, I'm going to call my Blitz. Blitz! Run across. Kill them and then die right back? Basically. Yeah. <laughs> He'll jump in, smash two, and die as well. And then die right now. Those two will smash back. He's only got two wounds, and they took his happy dancing elf save from a three up to a four up. No, he always has a three up. Oh, he still kept his three up. Okay, good. Never, he doesn't never. lose it. He just okay. has. Oh, okay. He's got impossible form. He's a. Oh, he's a, oh a it was the mist. <laughs> Penelope that got nerfed. Yes. Because that's like a war gear they have well, right no, now. Well, no, the, the impossible form got nerfed as well. Oh, if you okay. look in the book, he used to have a three up in vulnerable save. Now he has a four up in vulnerable save, and everyone else has a five up in vulnerable save. It's a sad which day to makes be them a squishy. <laughs> it's a sad day to be an agent of uh, Chegorak, yeah, I believe. I think it's a sad day to be an elf. <laughs> it is true. It's a sad day to be an elf. Hey, Drew Kari and Craft Ropes still do. Actually, I don't know how well they're doing, like competitively. Probably not the best. I think they came in. They someone had to be made an example of, and it was the Harlequins. <laughs> I still have fun. I still love the way they look. They are it's, good models. They are beautiful, and they still play. The one thing I never want an army to get nerfed is their un what they are unique. Uh, the Space Wolves are an Astartes army, so they have their combat doctrines, and their, like, brutality and melees. They kept all that. Like, the Harlequins, the, the thing that's unique to me to Harlequins, 
their invulnerable save across the board has always been a five up throughout the years. So like that being a five up still is the same as it's always been. The four up was a nice change for this edition. It proved to be too much allegedly, allegedly. Uh, but the thing that always made them unique was the flip belt. Yeah. Yeah, that was like they ignore all terrain. That's if, the, like if you're going to if you're going to make them stay at a five up invulnerable save, which mm. fine. Mm. Hold, oh, they got to be cheaper though. They should probably like, be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> they need to be a lot cheaper because a five up invul save on a one wound strength three toughness three model, I just cannot <laughs> feel enough to even warrant anything. There, there, there might be some validity in reducing the cost of the troop A's a little bit because they were never really too much of the problem. Like, sure, they were good and all that, but it was like the void weavers that were really nasty. That yeah. that yeah. price change was. Okay, I, I yeah. admit you could take what nine nine of them nine for of them. less than a thousand points or something. Yeah, it was wild, like yeah. seven hundred points. Yeah. And you could take nine, yeah. and that was just devastating. Like yeah. that was just way too much. I get that nerf, fine, not not, not a problem. But there's just I I can't field enough. And I mean, okay, yes, did I probably make some strategically no no moves and jump into stuff? Absolutely. I don't count myself as a great player. I like having fun with it, but. Hey, sometimes, Even if I held myself back, right, you would have just taken the points anyway and pushed yeah. at me, and I still would have been in the same spot. I just tried to do as much damage as I could, and I mean, I did a bit in the first turn. Well, you killed more than half my army. Absolutely, like I don't have a whole like a 180. These guys are like 100 points, so that's like 200, 180, so that's 360, 400. Uh, I have I, less than half my army left. I failed a lot when I was shooting them. Like, the one guy you did, the like, one. You killed wow. the other one, yeah. That, that, that one dreadnought to take out yeah. took a lot when it shouldn't have. That was 100% night and day because you had two units of Skyweavers. The one did zero, uh, they did three damage yeah. or something, right? And then the other one did like 20 something damage. Yeah. So like if you could have like averaged those out, then you probably could have popped both the venerables, yeah. uh, uh, which you should have realistically done. Ultimately, like the, as much as the Harlequins got hit over the last few months, uh, you just rolled like garbage. Oh, <laughs> your, first, no. your, your first then, couple I turns. Mean, when I sat there with all those guns to try and get one more shooting kill for another fun fight, yeah, nothing. Nothing, okay. no. Or was, you rolled, yeah, I just tanked everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, so that, like, uh, nerfs aside, you started seeing a lot more four-up and vulnerable saves towards the end of the game when it was kind of already skewing heavily into my favor, uh, which didn't, like, you know, that that kind of shows the nerf a little bit there. But uh, it's it's tough. It's like, and then, you know, I'm just trying to, like, the, the thing is, like, you played what was, like, a 2,000-point army when it first came out because their points, the only, things, the only things that got, like, overly nerfed in points were things you didn't really bring. You brought two Void Weavers, didn't bring the nine, so you don't really see that hit too bad. Uh, you played what was a 2,000 point list before, over the last like year or so. Like their yeah. point, yeah, that's the same. Uh, the I'm playing a 3,000 point list is the, what I'm actually playing. The only thing yeah. that changed was to, t to take the Mirror Architect. Um, that's uh, more thing. expensive, yeah. Like that's a 60 point stratagem from a 25 point or pivotal roll. So pivotal roll, yeah. That jumped up a lot. And the, the, the little squad that wasn't in the transport that used to be a 10-man blob. Okay, yeah. And it is now a five-man blob because I just did not have the points to give, because they, all the pivotal roles that everyone used, they all got cranked up. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the Death Jester one that gives you the three hits if you roll a six. Yeah. That went from, I think, 25 points to 40. <sighs> then the other one went to 60. Yeah. But I needed something to try and make them a little more survivable. Well, those are still the better rolls, right? That's why the cost. That's uh, that's why that. And again, it, like it's like you get two, like you got two different, like uh, well, I guess there's no. I don't think there's no medium ground for it because like back in the day, like this this comes up a lot. This is like a contentious point when uh, war gaming because like back in the day, you've been playing for a while yourself. Games Workshop did nothing. They would write the rules, release the models. And then radio silence until a new edition. Yeah, that was kind of it, right? You got like the bare minimum errata that would that was the, it barely would, it would it would change only the most broken or useless things. Correct, and it was like you like you would sometimes have a codex for eight plus years, and that was it. And then that's what people were used to. And now they're constantly tweaking, constantly looking at nerfing, unnerfing, readjusting things, and it's a lot to get a grasp on. But, you know, like, well, it, it's tough. I actually, I have no preference. I liked, so the problem is with the radio silence in the past, it was up to the players in a casual game to say, hey, I don't want to see this. I don't want to play with that. I don't want to play against nine Void Weavers, please. 
don't bring nine point <laughs> mirrors. And don't then you can be, be like, guy. sure, no problem. Don't be that guy. Absolutely. Uh, but competitively, that was a different story. But now the argument always was like, let the competitive scene figure out what they want to do for their stuff and let like the narrative stuff. Because it like, no matter what, even if the nerfs don't affect you so much, like say you didn't roll a single four up this game, you rolled only fives and one, two, threes, it still feels bad. Yeah. to know that you lost something even though it ha even though it has no effect so like when we're playing casually like a tempest of war game over just a video for people to watch at home while they paint models then yeah you probably don't need all those heavy-handed nerfs but i you know people there would there'd be a there'd be an uproar if i said we're not going to play with any of the gw faqs in the game i'm kind of bound to utilize them but i think they're a little too heavy-handed especially when you're just trying to play like consistent and fun not like necessarily to win but you want your stuff to be good still right it's, that's that's the idea yeah it's i mean it's no different in a lot of like even uh like a, a game i play a lot like at home not that it's a tabletop but apex legends yeah i know that yeah so the pros who play on like the algs and they're they constantly want like all these different nerfs or this needs to be taken out or these scanning characters it's like Okay, that's only for, for them. Yeah, yeah, for your ninety percent of your customer, they, like they're not you. I, no. I, I can't jump in the air, take a sniper with a hip fire, and nail someone in the head from ninety miles away with the big honking fifty cal sniper that you can get. That's never the, gonna happen. The yeah. nerf is not going to affect me if you do. Yeah. But yeah, they should give the people who run the tournaments, like when they create their own private lobbies, that they can like like okay, almost a separate client. Know, yeah. We, yeah. Okay. So take the Kraber out of the game, yeah. make this character not selectable. That yeah. way it balances it out. And then the regular people who are just regular Joes don't have to deal with, oh, I'm not super competitive and now my army sucks. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't have to get the blowback from it. And this has always been like, it's always been a tough one too, because I remember that coming up in the League of Legends a while ago too, where there was a lot of, I can't remember, it was like, it was only like season four or five, but there was a lot of gripes and they wanted the, 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 the tournament uh, client to not include certain updates that had recently come out. And there was like a big uproar and it was like a big issue and then it never came to be, but there was the like same idea where the competitive scene had to play with a different client with different updates, but it's not the same game that everyone's playing. It's kind of like watching you know like uh, the NFL or something but they're playing a different kind of football than the one that you're able to play with your buddy so it's a weird separation from the game too not as enjoyable to watch I don't know it's tough it's tough to find that happy balance uh, on one end I don't mind the you get your codex for what it is you read it you buy it you decide you like the army you want to buy it and you make a list to play it and then it changes six months later that's that feels super bad obviously mm -hmm. and then on the other end you, you get to keep it as it was played and bought, but it turns out it's a little obnoxious to play against. And like you're manipulating some rules unintentionally, and then your opponent asks you to stop doing it, then it's ultimately up to you to decide it. But then that's, that's when you get into the deeper politics of like, should- well, it a business decision? Yeah, exactly, like, when yeah. You, when you make Void Weavers that cheap and that OP, yeah. and everyone runs out and buys nine Void Weavers off the shelf, yeah. and then three months later, oh no, we're double, or like yep. quadrupling the price. Well, now you've got six void weavers that are you'll never use they're they're just, yeah. they're they're never going it's like well they still made the money they don't care they because don't care all the people yeah. who ran out and got it then yep you know thankfully i bought two i still have two that are unassembled they're still in the box but i was working through them and then that nerf happened i'm yep. like okay i'll probably turn those into star weavers smart you know yeah. when the chance comes but they're still in boxes wait to see what the new edition if something changes then i can I almost change those in whatever I feel see, like. That's a, that's the safe thing to do. I almost, and it, it sounds bad for me to say it, I almost never feel bad for anyone who gets caught out doing stuff like that because they're trying to do something malicious. They're trying to manipulate You're the game, right? You're maxing everything. Exactly, and I believe, and I, you, I might hate to say it, but you deserve what you get for when you do that, right? And you should know better. You should absolutely know better because if you're out there doing that, you're going to get caught for it. I don't want to hear you guys complaining. If you're going to go out there and buy, I remember when, now this is a long post game, sorry, the game is over. The game is done. I know, I forgot to say that earlier. We're in the post game Look now. at the score. We're done. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're okay. We're good. We got, we got you know, Harlequins don't typically play five turn games. You either win early or you lose early. That's typically how Harlequins are going to play with or without nerfs. Now, back in the day with the Supreme, and if you guys don't want to hear this rant, uh, the video is over essentially for you. You may move along, but I will talk for a little bit longer because that's what I typically like to do. And if you want, it's like a little mini podcast now, essentially. So back when you could spam demon, in 8th edition, when you could spam demon princes, people were going out buying like um, nine demon princes because it's like 3,000 sun demon princes, three death guard demon princes, and three chaos space marine demon princes. And then they had the audacity to complain when they combined them all into the, in like uh, competitively the same data sheet so you can only ever bring up to three of them yeah i don't feel bad for you <laughs> not at all like it's 
the game, what the game initially came out as and what it is now is drastically different and you can still have your narrative games, but the game is a heck of a lot more competitive because they've, they've taken out a lot of the minutia in the codexes and in the core rule book. Uh, and, uh, and in my opinion, it has lost a little bit of its identity, but it's still, still, you know, my 40K, I still love 40K. I love the whole setting of it all. I and should I, play Age of Sigmar next. <laughs> well, see, Age of, Sig well, Age of Sigmar has a lot less, um, it's a lot, I keep using the word volatile, but it's a lot less volatile. Typically in games Age of Sigmar, it's like always back and forth, like no matter what. And it will come down to a weird wonky die roll, like a bad charge or like, uh, you're like, I got 10 guys sitting on twos, you're like eight ones. That'll still like dictate the game, but that'll happen no matter what game you're playing, right? So, but at least, as, in, <laughs> as you can see here, but at least in Age of Sigmar, everything, everything kind of comes down to melee because it is a fantasy melee game. You can build like the sky doors that all shoot, but they're heavily penalized and it's really hard to make it work. Uh, so they, they did a good job with that where it is a melee focused game. So it's all about moving and charging in the right areas, the right angles. That's, that's where we were talking a little bit off camera. That's where like the nuances of the game get complicated because you're, uh, well, Stefan's never really played it. He, he, he knows that like, you have an army, but you've like more collected it because you like the elves, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I, I have played a little bit of old fantasy. Right. I used to have high elves for them. That's why. Not I surprised. Yeah. That. Yeah. They're essentially high elves of uh, so, Age of Sigmar. That's that's why I picked them up, and I the square bases, and I remember the little blocks, and right. like if you hit from the flank, you got bonuses, or if you yeah. charge from the rear, even more and bonuses. Then if you yeah. had spears, you could fight in three ranks instead of two. And yeah, there's a there's see that game was a, the, I love fantasy because it was like the best thing about that game was you could explain your war gear, and your opponent would know what it is because they have the same. It's like you have a spear, I have a spear, they do the exact same thing. I have a sword and shield, you have a sword and shield, same thing. Same idea, right? Like uh, a lot of things like that. Where it came down to was like the major differences were the stat lines. So you're paying like uh, 13 points an elf. I'm paying four points a man. But you have like you always strike first, and you have higher weapon skill, higher initiative, higher leadership. I'm like bad at all those stats, but I got you know three to one ratio. Yeah. Essentially, that's kind of like that's where the differences in that game kind of came up. I mean, but I mean, you have similar. Like I mean, the guard. Yeah. You know, like you can spam. So much. So yeah. many guards. Astro Militarium, I mean, the Astro, the Abethus, the Stardust could do it now too. Those Space Marines, of, look how many Space Marines I had in a 2000 point game. It but was I, nuts. I think about not, like if you, unless you went heavy on the tanks, which you still can, but like, I mean, I, I have a, a friend who plays all Astro Militarium. Yeah. And like, we were, what were we doing? We were doing a, a crusade. Yep. And he had Astro Militarium. And he was with, and this was before they got their newest codex. Oh, so still, so playing Crusade Eighth Edition Codex, though, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was constantly winning, just because the power level that we were playing at initially, because it was, I think we had to, we up to thirty power level, but you had to like make certain amounts for each month because it was a slow grow league. Okay, Crusade. yeah, makes sense. And he was like undefeated, <laughs> just because like everyone's like, I've got four models, I've got six models, I've got fifty. Yeah, <laughs> he's playing the object. You just don't have enough bullets to kill all those guys. Yeah. yeah, and you know they all just sit there with the guns, like, okay, your four models have to make forty saves. Yeah, I don't well, care if it's a three up. You roll forty dice, you're gonna fail a couple. Yeah, <laughs> and you're right, you're right. Like a lot of armies scale down real, really well, and like some scale up. Like I always found with Necrons, they the more points you give to Necrons, the way more powerful they become. Uh, and then things like uh, Ash Militarium, the less points they have, the more powerful they become as well, right? Like it's, but then it's not, that's not, it's generally, I mean, generally, but you're right, yeah. Uh, and uh, I can't. had to tell him not to do, because he, he had, there was a relic that he could take. Oh, he put on the stupid tank turret though, because it, yeah. like, it was poorly it, written. That it was, was like 40 some odd, yeah. like mortal wound shots. I was like, it no. Was, <laughs> it was like six, it was like six to wound where mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage, but you put it on a punisher who shoots 40 shots a turn. Yeah. If he moves less than half yeah. in the eighth, grinding, uh, with the grinding advance in the eighth edition book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we, yeah. we, we That's, did that once and we're like, no, no. Did he agree <laughs> to stop using yeah, it? Yeah, oh, like, that, okay, there you go, no perfect. Problem. Absolutely, yeah. He, he knew how broken yeah. it was, but he's like, this is allowed? And I was like, Yes, but no. <laughs> See, that, that's where like the, the arbitration comes in where like it's up to the players. Like I, that brings me back to my previous point where like uh, if there's if radio sounds from Games Workshop, there's no router from the dev team or anything like that. And then it's up to the players to decide. It's like, hey, I don't want you to play this anymore. It's like, well, it's all I have. I, I refuse to not play it. And then there's no fixing that. You just, that person gets excommunicated from the play group. Or if that's the only person you have to play with, you have to suffer through that, right? In, yeah. I think it was fifth edition for me. 
Oh, that was a brutal dish. That was, there was a lot of nasty things in 5th edition. Grey Knights were bad. These guys were one of the most oppressive things in the game. I believe if I recall, sorry to interrupt, I'd go off on hand. These guys all had split fire and heavy yeah. weapons, so every last cannon could go in a different direction. Maybe it was third edition that I'm thinking of then. The third edition had uh, the Gene Stealer cult and the Blood Angels were bonkers because you used to be able to consolidate into new combats. In my yeah. group of friends that we all played, I, w I only had the one army and that was Eldar. Okay, yeah. And I got really into running Eldrad with two Farseers and 10 warlocks in a ball of just psychic shielding of the re like it was just re guy upon doom re all that stuff yeah and eventually they're like okay you need to stop playing that because like they could focus their entire army on that unit so and i would lose involved. like yeah. one warlock because yeah. it's all in ball saves and i'm re-rolling everything yeah and then it's just like they get up through it and everything's got destructor so it's flamer templates all around yeah it was nasty yeah, <laughs> that's uh, see, that's pretty, see that it's like, and then it's up to the players to decide. We don't want to see that anymore. But then nowadays, game, games workshop comes in. It's like, well, everyone's playing this. It's really consistent. We see where it's not fun. We're just going to decide to exit here, uh, exit here. So, and that really sucks for some people that use like a fraction of that in their list because then they have to change up how that whole part builds. Whereas if you're using the entire thing, well, you're probably playing competitively. A lot of pe a lot of people like that swap their armies quickly too. So they'll buy like a fire slayer army for this one build. They nerf it's like, okay, well, I'll get rid of that army by the next most powerful thing right like it's weird because like it doesn't affect the tournament play have that much money uh they just trade they're always trading always trading that's they they they, they almost never own an army they they always are in limbo on armies right they they have their friends or like a lot of them are, are play groups too where like they just share their armies mm -hmm. like everyone like a group of like 20 dudes has every army in the game and the, like the competitive guys just go to their friends to borrow their armies but they have like massive collections so they're never really spending the money so they, so it's like, it was, it, 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 on one end, it actually doesn't really affect the competitive players that much because they'll swap to the next hotness. Yeah. Whereas everyone who just has that one army, they're like, oh, this feels kind of bad. Yeah. So there's, I, I'm, I'm of the mindset where like, there has to be like a different, they're trying to, they're trying to be like, this is what match play, these are the effects for match play. But everyone who plays casually, not, not everyone generally, generally most people play in the competitive format. Right? We did. This game was technically the competitive format. We did Arcs of Omen. Uh, but the Arcs of Omen kind of, I like restrictions, so they give you like a guideline to play by as well. But if it's, uh, it's like if I was off camera, I wouldn't care about any of the nerfs. I'm like, sure, just do the only one I would like, the luck of the laugh, God, that one's staying. That one's, <laughs> that one's going away. But you keep your four pinball, and I don't care if I was playing off camera, right? If it like, it's not going to make or break my game if you make like four or five more invulnerable saves and then you get to keep the rule you felt good about, right? Like a little, you felt a little more confident. And then I, I actually personally loved Armor Contempt playing as and against Space Marines because it kind of gave them a little bit more flavor. I don't want to run an entire company of Space Wolves every time I play. Like for a 2,000 point game, if these guys are at uh, 180 points uh, with all their upgrades, you could do 10 squads of 10 for less than 2,000 points. That is an entire company of Space Wolves <laughs> on the table. That is one out of the companies. That is insane, dude. That is nuts. Oh, sorry, ten, that's only 100 Marines. Uh, yeah, it's 100 Marines. That's yeah. one of the 10 companies because there's 100 Marines in every company. There's a couple Dreadnoughts and Vehicles as well. But you're playing an entire company of Marines? No, thank you. That's nuts. So we don't need that in the game. I, I like to see more unique rules on the models because otherwise these guys are just, I'm a guy with a chainsaw to three up save. Not opposed to like, I'm a space, really. nothing screams space marine about the space marine to me, sadly, at this point in the edition. But that sometimes happens when the game gets a little too killy. Right now, these are just guys in armor and uh, chain swords. And their guns are uh, whatever. I don't know, they get it's, it's, it's hard for me to voice what I'm trying to express. They don't feel like space marines as much. Does that make sense? Because they don't. They, they're supposed to be like jack of all trades. Now it's just all out aggression. Now it's just kill, kill. There's no durability, there's no saving, there's no tactical positions. It's just point, click, please die. <laughs> that's, that's what every army feels like they're trying to do yeah. right now. And that's okay, that's okay. Cause some armies are really good at doing that. And now every army can get like, even Necrons, like you could build like an entire Necron army. The durability does not matter. It's all about point and kill. That's all you're trying to do in a lot of ways. Or, or just drown them out in bodies because we have everything so cheap now. 11 points for a warrior these days. That's nuts. They What's went, the uh, the new world leaders one like? Uh, they're really expensive. 
they seem really expensive, but they seem like a codex that was written before the Arcs of Omen stuff, which they probably were. They so like a couple things about them. They're kind of written with 10th edition in mind in a way, not really, but like, because they really seem like the rumors make a 10th like, edition seem like it's gonna be completely different, but they're written before all the points changes. So you're paying quite a bit of points for all your world leader things. Uh, and you're paying for the war gear and everything too. Whereas all the other Marines are free for the war gear. So that feels kind of bad. You're paying for war gear on the world leader still, right? Oh, uh, yes, I am. Yeah, okay, yeah. so like that's, so you can tell they're written before Arcs of Omen. How many points for 10 Marines? 180. Uh, 250 for world leaders. Exactly. That's a, that's, so <laughs> DYA. You also have a Primarch that has like what, 36 attacks or something? 39. Yeah. 39. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Three off. <laughs> but I'm gonna assume, <laughs> If you don't go first, oh, on the on the charge. first combat. <laughs> if you don't go first, or you don't make a charge, he's probably going to die to shooting. Yeah, but then he comes back infinitely. Is it infinitely? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. That's, that's disgusting. That's the one that can come back. Uh, well, he has to have six blood death points. Oh, so six things have to die. No. So either way, every time he dies, he gives you two blood death points because it's a model okay. dying plus his character. Oh, there you go. So you get two of his rim die. Get that four in the bank before he dies. It's not that hard. Three spawn. That's fair. Yeah, three spawn will do it. So okay, he. But then you know, big Primarch, big name character, adds a lot to the list too. No, you know, I so. just made fun of it. I, I like the direction that I love that one your book. I like the way it's going. I, well, I would. I'd rather see them figure an average cost of the unit. Let the people build the box with all the special weapons. Don't pay for the special weapons, and then just have a, a better cost for it overall. The, <laughs> the, the battery's about to die, so I'm gonna have to kill it uh, now, anyway. So <laughs> that's that's pretty much it for the post game. Thanks, man. For the, thanks for the game, dude. Like, no thanks problem. for the good spirit. I still have fun. Yeah, that's all that matters. Ultimately, that's all that matters. This, if you had a slightly better first turn, this would have been a completely different game. I'm it's glad it went first I'm, turn, better second turn. <laughs> yeah, overall, <laughs> the fact that I got to go first and get my reinforcements was a major factor in this game, and it was kind of cool to have all my reinforcements in reserve for free. That was kind of cool to see too. Mm. But uh, that's it for this game, folks. I'm about to lose the camera here. I could get another battery and continue it, but I've already been talking long enough. So thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time for some more Warhammer 40K. Happy Wargaming, and thank you again for the game, dude. <laughs> catch you next time.